How many days a week should you strength train? Well, here's what the science says. You guys want to take a guess? Mm. Two to three. You know what? Three. Yeah, it's less than that. So it, the, the the studies on strength training are quite interesting. If you simply want to prevent the muscle loss that occurs oh, that's with different. aging, so we'll start there, right? Mm, like once every two yeah, weeks, right? Say one Something like week. that. Yeah, if, if you're just trying to prevent the muscle loss, what is it like? I think an 8 to 10% loss in muscle every decade after 30 or something like that. It's like once every two weeks or maybe even once every three weeks. Wow. Now, if you're just looking, to, if you want to improve your strength, uh, build some muscle, most people would get something like 80% of the results that they could get with like one day a week of strength mm -hmm. training. Now, to be clear, this doesn't mean you shouldn't be active every day. And I think that's what people confuse when they look at the studies, right? There's studies that show that being active daily is good for your health. That's true. It's true to that moving daily, right? Not just sitting down all day, but moving, uh, having more steps in your day, standing, that's better for your health. But we're talking about workouts and in particular strength training. It is a lot less than people think. In fact, when I, you know, as a, as a trainer, training a lot of clients, uh, especially the back half of my career, majority of my clients were everyday people uh, between the mid 30s to 60s. Um, I'd say 50% of my clients strength trained once a week, the other half twice a week, and that was it. And the ones that trained twice a week who were with me for years and years and years. I mean, Doug was my client. I trained him for a couple of years and we strength trained twice a week. And we got some incredible results, which is two days. Because there's so much you can do in the workout where you don't need to keep adding uh, more days. A lot of people don't realize this because they look at the, you know, the, the fitness influencers uh, on social media or the super high level fitness athletes. And they say, okay, that I need to work out like that. No, no, no. Very little is required. Uh, there, uh, there was a study a while ago that showed that one isometric contraction <laughs> once a week did something like improve people's strength by like 15%. So it's it's really it's funny not as much as you think. You know, we look back at like some of these like hokey machines that were really trying, like a lot of the, um, what do they call those, the bio guys, uh, uh What's the name for that? Biohack guys? Biohackers, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was like a big push was like trying to convince people that you only had to train one time a week. And I used to scoff at that uh, because it was like they were just trying to promote a machine that was like pretty ineffective, but it did contract the muscles. It did uh, basically cover the bases. And so there is a bit of an argument. Yeah. Well, that's how something like that gets legs. Yeah. Right? There is some science to support how effective that could be. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think that spinning thousands of dollars on a machine <laughs> is yeah. a little read that you could probably yeah, you don't need you that. could do some isometric push-up holds and pull-ups and get just as good of uh, of the results and so the the science that supports that would support the same thing there but i mean that thing would there wouldn't have uh, even been a business there had there not been some sort of research or data to support how effective just what was, i think it's like one set like yeah. one set to failure uh -huh. per muscle and that's all you had to do like once a week yeah. and then you could train that way yeah like, I'll, look i'll say this too um and i made the case um in the resistance training revolution book that i wrote years ago if if you took the average person and you wanted them to reap most of the health benefits uh, that you can get from strength training, right? The, the insulin sensitivity, the faster metabolism, the strength, the mobility. You're looking at, and I'm talking long-term, right? Like long-term for the rest of your life, like two 40-minute workouts a week would be a, would be enough for most people. Now, you're not going to look like a bodybuilder. You're not going to get this crazy rip physique doing that. Probably not. But if you want just fitness and health and you're active on the other days, that's pretty much it. Now, I can make the case that practicing more frequently with less time, like 15 minutes a day, probably better or whatever. But, you know, now we're getting into like, you know, this is good, what's better. But like the average person, uh, if they were consistent for the rest of their life with two days a week of strength training for about 40 minutes or even one day a week of 40 minutes of good strength training, in addition to just being active, yeah, they would do totally. In fact, there was a study on walking that shows that the benefits that, that can come from steps, right? Walking, you get 85% of the benefits if you do 8,000 steps a day. Yeah. 85%. So all the possible benefits you can get from being active on a daily basis, 85% of it is 8,000 steps. In other words, I, I want people to understand this. A lot of the benefits that we see from 
exercise are because our lack of activity is causing such poor health yeah. mm -hmm. that 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 you're going to get tons of benefits just from doing something. Now, yeah. above and beyond that, then you start to add stuff. Like if you're looking to maximize performance, really push strength, push endurance, well, then adding more days uh, starts to become valuable. But if we're talking about health, longevity, feeling good, um, it doesn't take much and it doesn't get communicated enough. And, and there's the, you know, there's the people in our space the dysfunctional fitness fanatics, yeah. they don't like to communicate this because to them, it's about uh, beast mode. It's about beating yeah. yourself up. It's about pain and crushing yourself. And it's like, this is why the average person, one of the reasons why well, the average person it's liberating. can't relate. It's liberating if you can uh, communicate that to a lot of people out there, what the minimum viable dose is. Like, what, what does that look like in terms of still being able to kind of maintain yes. your, your muscle uh, in health uh, metrics on that level, like what's the homeostasis? So that way too, you can kind of move according to, well, I can do more. And so this is what this yes. looks like now. And I can actually like kind of progress or I don't have this like panic that I'm going to lose everything if I only get uh, just this little bit in. I, I mean, I don't know if you guys remember, but it wasn't that long ago. Um, it was before I did the GLP-1 experiment. Um, I was like just very sporadically working out one uh one day a week sometimes three more often though one or two mm. just like six seven months ago a little bit longer now <laughs> some of the best ever felt i mean that combined with making sure i'm getting walks with my wife and kind yeah. of doing our normal activities with this kind of like sprinkled in strength training where i never let a whole week go by where i didn't get in the gym at least once and do a couple things like really it was a really good period of time for me to really feel that and see that and go like man when i think about like how i feel like my joints felt really good i was really mobile had relative strength i mean it wasn't peak strength me but i could pick up anything that i was gonna have to pick up at home or do anything like that i could take my son on hikes and wrestle and be fine like it was pretty surprising how good i felt and how relatively strong i was to the amount of work that i was doing i think and, I, and I, this also, your point, Sal, is, is, this is what supports the blue zones, right, that we've talked about in the past about, right. you know, longevity and health. And, like, they, the, what they had in common isn't that they all went to the gym. It's, like, that they had these active lifestyles. They walked to the grocery store. They had community. Yeah. They move around. It's, like, it's amazing uh, the, how far away society has gotten from that that it starts getting into all these different training modalities, which one's the best, this, that. It's like, God, if we could just get back to Look, being you, more active. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, are you struggling to see results with your butt workouts? Are your glutes not responding? We have a secret to a great butt guide. Now, this gives you strategies, exercises, nutrition tips on how you can develop a great backside. You can download it for free right now by clicking on the link below in the description. You have fitness fanatics, and, and I get that, right? I'm, I'm going to be very honest. And this, again, this is the point that I used to make to trainers when they would work for me. It's like, stop trying to turn all your clients into fitness fanatics. That's not going to happen. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's rare. It's rare that somebody falls so low in love with fitness that they become a fanatic. Um, and most of those fanatics end up working in the fitness space. And it uh, happens organically. And it, yeah, happens, it happens organically. On <laughs> like like most people, most people, what we want to do is, is first off, communicate the benefits of some exercise, appropriate exercise that's effective. And effective doesn't mean hardest. It just means effective. Um, and the, for most people, it's like, how can we get them to be consistent for the rest of their lives? And what that looks like is probably one day a week of a structured workout, strength training, uh, especially, with daily activity. And now you do this for the rest of your life, you're going to do great. You're not going to be obese if you combine this with a healthy diet, right? You're not going to be obese. You're going to avoid the majority of the chronic health issues and you'll look good. You're going to look good. Now, you're not, again, you're not going to look shredded. You're not going to be this crazy bodybuilder, but you're going to look better than your peers. You'll feel a lot better than your peers. And now you have something uh, that's consistent. And when I figured this out, uh, my success with my clients, it, it skyrocketed and, and they became consistent. And part of the reason why they became consistent is because I wasn't trying to get them to love fitness as much as I did, where they would come in five days a week and we'll get faster results, come five days a week. And like you start convincing people that's the only way, then their choices are either do that or nothing is what ends up uh, being the case. Yeah. But that's uh, not the case at all. And, and, and you know, you, you just mentioned, you know, taking time off or whatever. I just pulled up a study. Muscle loss doesn't really happen until four weeks 
of taking time off. Is four? that what it is? Yeah. I thought I read that atrophy four? is seven days after full no, recovery. No, four weeks is the late, the last that I just saw. Um, now I would, I would assume the more advanced you are, the shorter that time period is. Maybe if you're really pushing yourself to limit, but for most people, it's about four weeks. After that, you'll lose some muscle size, but not strength. Strength actually sticks around much longer. And then building muscle back, as, we, as we've talked about before, hmm. muscle memory uh, kicks in. And building it back the second time, third time around is really, really fast. But again, we're talking about structured yeah. workouts. So don't get confused. We're not saying the, be active once a week. We're saying, you know, how often do you need to like strength train to get most of the health and longevity benefits and you know, and and like, once a week and like I've been highlighting with this whole series that I've been doing too is like imagine too if you just made a commitment to yourself that hey for a short period of my time I am going to actually get after it and try and build a bunch of muscle it like again like investing or saving it's like once you've done that once you've actually you have pushed for a period of time how much like you can lean on that like mm -hmm. and this is one of the things that's been really even interesting and neat for me to experience myself going through this is like Wow, it's it's uh so it's been highlighted that the this little bit of stimulus that I have to do to really quickly get back uh, a pretty damn good physique. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm someone was asking me. I was just getting interviewed yesterday from uh, Brad Jensen, and he's like, "So you know, what's the? Are you going to keep going? And what's that?" And I'm like, "Well, I'm going to keep going for the audience to see the continued progress and transforming." I said, "But to be honest, I'm already back to like right where I yeah. like to be." I love this. I've decided that 210 pounds, 12% body fat me is like perfect. It's like, I feel good. I feel strong. Um, I'm I'm lean to where I feel confident with taking my, my shirt off. Easily, I can manage uh, weekends where I go off yeah. and I have some drinks with the wife and eat off the uh, out of bounds. And, all that. Yeah, take three, four days off in a row. Now we're out, then That's come right. back. It's a very flexible place for me to be that allows me to enjoy all the other aspects of health and balance in my life while also still enjoying the kind of aesthetics and the stuff that I like. Very minimal effort. It's not very difficult to manage this, especially once you've put that time under the iron. It's a, a really cool place to be. Again, you know, just again, speaking to trainers, and if you're not a trainer, I think this will resonate as well. Um, your goal as a trainer is how do I get this person to do this forever? How do I get this person to enjoy this to an extent to where they do this on a forever basis? What does that look like? And what it doesn't look like is five days a week in the gym. That's not going to happen with 99.9% .9 of your clients. Um, and, and by the way, you know, uh, we have a webinar coming up where we're going to teach, just going to bring that up. We're going to teach trainers how to keep their clients through the holiday season. Cause during the holiday season is when people tend to drop off. Uh, and we sell this in gyms. When I manage gyms, the drop off on, uh, the, you know, the, just the, the traffic, right. The, the member traffic goes down 30%, 50% in some cases, right around November, December gets even slower. Then of course, January kicks in, you know, set back half of January, it, it just explodes. But trainers would always sometimes struggle. They would lose clients around this time. And now I didn't. The back half of my career, I don't lose a single client during the holiday season. And, and, and the reason for it was exactly what I'm talking about right now. I, I really did a good job helping them understand that we don't need to do this like crazy. You know, you're going to see me once a week and then once a week, maybe do some stuff on your own. And then every day just kind of stay active. Well, that's, you can stay consistent with that, especially if you're getting good results and you feel good. Yeah. And so people just didn't stop. In fact, they stopped when I would stop. If I went out of town, that's when they yeah. would stop. Otherwise I never lost a single client during the holiday season. Uh, and of course, uh, you, you got to understand this and explain this because the messaging from our industry you know, our industry is a, an industry that's, that's it's funded by consumers. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the information you're going to get is either what makes money or what gets people, what captures people during that, that their short stints of motivation when the person looks in the mirror and says, oh my God, I got to do something, right? So that information seems like it's true. So here, here I am communicating what I'm communicating. And I even know people listening right now are like, well, I thought, what do you mean? I thought it was like, I had to just go work out all the time. And, you know, and even trainers, what do you mean? I got to train clients four days a week if they're going to get any results. Like, no, that's, that's not how it works at all. Yeah. And we'll talk about this stuff in, in that, in that webinar. Trainer, way, trainer webinar.com. Uh, if you're a gym owner, if you're a personal trainer, if you're a fitness manager and you don't have all of your trainers registering this, the goal for us is to just like we do with the podcast, right? Uh, we're, per, we're coming out the same way that we came out with this podcast was let's just go out and give as much free, valuable content as we possibly can to prove that we have some value to add. 
if you are a trainer or like I said, GM, fitness manager, and you guys aren't doing that, our goal is to do that. And we're going to literally coach and train your trainers for free. Yep. So uh, the goal is to build that thing up to where we have thousands of trainers that we're influencing for the good and helping be better coaches and trainers. And we'll be doing it bi-monthly now. If we can get enough people to continue to register yeah, every month. and this thing grows, it can become a thing that we do every single month. But we first have to prove that we can load this thing every time. So, so I'm, fun. Ex I'm excited about so that fun. stuff. For I was sure. going to ask you, Adam, uh, how many, with what you're doing right now, how many bars, shakes, and things are you including uh, in uh, in this journey? You're, you're, you're about 30-something days in. Yeah. Uh, mostly Whole Foods, but the occasional, I'll see you eat the occasional like Legion protein cookie or almost, shake or whatever. It's actually almost daily, almost daily right now. And that's not because I'm trying to do that. It's uh, just at, purely out of convenience. What is, is it mostly that you're using? Uh, almost every day. I, I don't know. I'm just like, I snack on those Legion cookies like crazy right now. <laughs> I don't know what it, what it is about them. Uh, that they're just, it's kind of like in between, like I had my breakfast before we did the first episode. Um, which means I just ate like literally two hours ago. I'm not quite ready for my next meal. You know what the macros are on that? Yeah. 15 grams of protein. Oh, wow. 200 something calories. If I, well, I have it right here in front of me. Uh, 260 calories, 15 grams, 15 grams of protein, eight grams of fat. Uh, and then carbs are 30. So it's like just a little snack. It's yeah. A little snack that's got protein, uh, protein in it. And I, it's not very filling. It's very easy. It's like, and it's just, and me, it's, I'm really chasing the protein because I'm still at a place now where it's a lot of work for me to hit yeah. 200 to 220 grams of protein every day. So anywhere I can find like a, oh, bump 15, 20 uh, grams of protein doesn't feel like I'm, mm -hmm. uh, eating a lot. Uh, I'll do that. And so that's kind of why that that's been happening right now. I've been doing that pretty consistently. And then there tends to be one shake a day, you know, again, always targeting, trying to go all whole foods, but I'm still at a place now where I'm not quite, I mean, I'm also not, um, I'm not packing like I used to when I was competing, I was packing all my meals. Like I had, I had the six pack bags, you know, back yep. when that was a thing. And like I had five, six meals ready to go every day. But right now I didn't show up to work with one, maybe two meals prepped. Uh, and then I go home and I have Katrina normally makes dinner. So, you know, that normally leaves like another meal or two of, or that I need to get the grams of protein up. So I find myself doing a cookie. That. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wish yeah. I could eat them. They have dairy. I taste them. They're good. Ugh. You can, you can't. So that will bother you. It's enough to bother you still. Yeah. You know, I, I, I thought you were doing, bit. I thought you were doing better with like, the, I was, you know, of course you don't. What, what do you think I did? I, I yeah. tried to see the limit. Yeah. And I found the limit. So I got to back way off. You so know? you know what I'd love for you to test, Sal? What? Because I, I've, I've found this during this journey. I've noticed this, uh, those like, like, especially something like that, that's like way is, doesn't always fully agree with me. I notice a big difference in when I'm in a surplus versus a deficit. Yeah, of course. Yeah. If I'm in a deficit, of course I can yeah. get away with some oh, of the yeah. things. If, if I'm in a bulk, uh, I've become far more sensitive, very sensitive to right? food. I mean, I'm yeah. already noticing that. So I'll communicate this in, on cause my, I think it's just inflammatory to begin with it's, because there's it's, more food in your gut. It's kind of changing <laughs> my attitude about what I'm even doing right now. So I'll communicate this on my series for everyone that's watching. Um, you know, the, I'm currently in a mini bulk right now, but I'm actually noticing it. Like I, I, for the first time in like, God, six plus months, my psoriasis started to itch a little. So I, I, mm -hmm. I noticed that bothered me. Yeah, you're for, saying. I had a, a couple of times where my stool was off a little bit and it, I'm pushing the calories, yeah. you know, not even hard, like just, just agreed that uh -huh. I would. I, and so my body just does so much better hovering around maintenance and more deficit than in a surplus. It just seems digestion mm -hmm. is better. I don't seem to be as sensitive to all the things that would typically bother me. Speaking of food and sensitivities, my wife found these stats uh, and information, you know, the whole food dye thing. Uh, that oh, you know yeah. they're they're banning certain food dyes. Oh God! Don't do, do this. To, don't do they, this to us. They actually um, marched in front of Kellogg's uh, just recently in like really? some of these, yeah, some of these like cereal companies and and food companies uh, about the dyes. Like this is the words getting out and like there's, yes, there's people like picketing. Yeah. So so check this out: red number forty, yellow number five, yellow number six. Blue number one and blue number two are associated with hyperactivity, which by the way, hyperactivity, when you, if, if you consume something that causes hyperactivity, there are, there is some neuronal damage that's happening. That's what causes it. Okay. So not good for the brain. Red number three associated with thyroid issues. Green number three, bladder disease. 
What the hell? Yeah, so so the dyes aren't that great. Now, here's what's trippy, right? How do they connect that? Part? Now, here's what's trippy. I'm going to give you the ingredients of Fruit Loops in Australia, <laughs> okay? And then I'll give you the ingredients of Fruit Loops in America. In Australia, it's maize flour, which is corn, wheat flour, oat flour, sugar, vegetable oil, salt, natural colors. The colors they use are paprika, curcumin, vegetable carbon, carbon or copper, chlorophyll, minerals, vitamins, natural flavors. That's it. Here's the ingredients for American Fruit Loops. Corn flour blend. Sugar, wheat flour, whole grain, oat flour, modified food starch, vegetable oil, oat fiber, maltodextrin, salt, soluble corn fiber, natural flavor, red number 40, yellow number five, blue number one, yellow number six, BHT. Then you get vitamins and minerals in there. Mm. So it's the same product, very different. And they're showing, I mean, I, I could show you India's uh, Fruit Loops versus ours, Germany's Fruit Loops versus ours, all very different, far less ingredients. Ours is packed full of now didn't you read recently that that's changing is that right didn't california you? just california just california, california. but we're in. such a big market yeah. that yeah. i wouldn't be surprised They're if the they changed it all the way around like yeah. America, california is such a big market that if we pass a law banning something and it's upheld if they're if, if they're able to maintain it then they may just change it all the way around Especially if they think the it's, rest of it's always interesting for me to see what gets traction, you know, where the focal point is. Cause like, yeah, like all of a sudden now everybody cares about these dyes and I'm like, there's quite a lot of things to care about, you know, and you're just zooming in yeah. on this, which is good. I mean, at least it starts the conversation of like, Hey, there's some things in our food we got to pay but attention to. They made a good point of this, right? There was this, this woman that was presenting this and she said, cause we're all, you know, uh, what generation are we X? I think we're like towards the back end of X or whatever. <sighs> oh, we were the, the cartoon, you know, cereal generation. Yeah. And so what do people, what do parents our age tend to say? Like I ate that stuff growing up. It's not that big of a deal. We didn't No. We didn't. If you look at the ingredients of the oh, same cereal That version of it, yeah. It was not the same. No. Yeah. So everything's radically different for our kids, even yeah. though it's the same brand. Wow, yeah. So, because when we were kids, kids were eating garbage too. Make no mistake. I mean, we, I, my yeah. friends would eat garbage. The whatever. difference is the science has evolved on how to make it more addictive, and they've put more energy and effort into right. those things, putting into it than yes. they have. Like, and there's more of these, I hate to use the word chemicals, because you get the, 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 the like nutrition. Like or preservatives. You get the or, nutrition. Nerve, everything's everything's a chemical. chemical. <laughs> you know what I mean? The synthetic, <laughs> whatever, okay? It's you guys molecules. Are, relax, everybody. But it's not the same. It just isn't. So, you know, yeah. Fruit Loops, uh, Captain Crunch, you know, uh, you know, what's that one cereal with yeah. the with the marshmallows? Did they change I mean, it's all the, different. I swear they changed the characters, too. They used to make them, like, I, they were like crackheads. Like, all of them. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, You know, it, it, it kind of like what you, I mean, you started this conversation with asking me about how many shakes and bars and stuff like that I'm taking, like... <clears throat> The way I approach my diet at our house is like, you know, the goal is always to try and get as much whole foods. I most certainly don't shame myself or get depressed or think I'm a failure because yeah. I have a shake, I have a bar, I eat some sort of processed food. Because in the context of like what is making the what's moving the needle the most towards my pursuit of overall health, strength, fitness, like that journey is like, you know, taking care of the big rocks, focusing on my sleep. Uh, hitting my protein intake, strength training a couple times a week. You know, these things are moving the needle and making the biggest impact on my overall health. And then it gets down to this more granular stuff. But you stuff. also don't have to worry because you don't have Fruit Loops. Yeah. You wouldn't have Fruit Loops if you were in Australia well, you know, or Germany. No, that's a good point. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just don't have the Fruit Loops. I mean, that's, and to me, that's a better conversation. It's like, what are you even doing with that shit? Like, there's other alternatives. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so I weird. I want my Fruit Loops to be organic. It's so <laughs> weird to me, too. Like, there's so many other, uh, like, it's one of the sense. comments I'm getting a lot right now in my, in my DMs is like, because I'm sharing all my food. Yeah. And everyone's like, man, that looks so good. And man, you have you throw cheese on there, and I saw you put butter, and it's like, yeah, I mean, butter, olive oil, cheese, yeah. all good shit. Like you can make these healthy foods still taste yeah. really good. I'm not sacrificing taste, but definitely not to be at twelve percent. I mean, maybe when I get down to like three percent, I sacrifice. Yeah. Some Dude, how yeah, hilarious! No, sacrifice. Is it, like I was with my parents, and they're I, they still like are just baffled that I'll put I'll slab a bunch of butter on like whatever i'm eating or whatever and it's like you think that's the problem yeah. like that's hilarious yeah. like it's it, it it's just this disconnect in terms of like yeah. old information i used to be you know my, my opinions on on like these types of things has changed uh i you know i do feel like we should just be able to have, be free to whatever eat whatever 
and it's it should be up to the market. So consumers and the and the providers, we decide what we want, what we don't want. But I I, I have changed my mind on this for kids. I think uh, advertise. I think they need to stop advertising this. Just anything to anybody who's not an adult. I think it shouldn't be legal. And now why? I don't. A lot of parents don't have the the luxury or the privilege of being as involved as I am because. They work a lot. Their kid goes to public school. So the public school ends up yeah. educating their kids on what to eat. And then they end up going home. And then yeah. mom and dad is they at home. They just navigate to what tastes good. Yeah. And That's so it. we got to be, you know, I think we have to be a little bit more careful. And does it play a role and in influence? It I mean, does. I don't disagree with that. We don't We don't uh, allow cigarette and alcohol companies to market to kids. Yeah. So why should they cereals ban- and candy and everything else? Didn't they ban... Um, uh, what was it fake cigarettes to kids and stuff yeah, like that because yeah. of that? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, why not? Still got big league chew though. So, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's different, Justin. <laughs> you guys remember, hey, do you guys remember the fake <laughs> prepping them? The fake I love cigarette the gum? You, you're blowing it, you blow the, the, the puff. puff. Yeah, <laughs> dude, I saw gummy joints. Uh, what? no, I'm not even not joking. when you were a kid. Yeah, like, no, well, from where? I mean, not like when I was a kid, but when my kids were like at this uh market, like really, yeah, the edibles. And they're just, <laughs> it's like bubble gum, you know, but it had, it's all marked like joints. Did you guys so see that? Like, did you guys see the, 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 the meme I posted of the Tesla robot? Tesla, yeah. Tesla robot rolling yeah. a joint. Like, okay, I'm sold out. Yeah, dude, dude. <laughs> Might not be able to do dishes, but if you can roll my joints, I don't know, dude. <laughs> That's valuable. That's, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm in. I yeah. mean, 20,000 yeah, to 30,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in you now. still don't think they'll wash dishes? No, though. they can't wash dishes, but they can roll a joint, though. Yeah. <laughs> It can't. It's, it's why you won't see them market it. It can put them away. We yeah. can't put them in the you just, dishwasher. Well, I, I, just, your heels are just digging in the no, dirt. Just, I wish I, I was there to see them in, in person to see how they really function. Because these videos, to me, it's always like a lot of smoke and mirrors, you know? Yeah. Because uh, even they, they busted some of these robots that were like viral from different companies that were like actual people like dressed up Pretending in a costume. Yeah. And then also this one, I, I mean, this could totally be like just like misinformation, whatever, blasted in there to put put a, a black eye on like Tesla stuff. But they were saying that like they 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 thought that somebody was there like controlling them. For, oh yeah, behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. Yeah, I don't know if that's. True. I mean, I I, I, don't know I, if that's I, I was either. watching some. I've seen some clips of people interacting with them, and I mean, as of right now, it doesn't seem. I was trying to go. Okay, where what would I use this robot for at my house? And then I also try and think like. How much time would it take you to spend training it to do the things that you needed to do for you also? Because it's not like yeah. the robot comes to my house. I and think he, it's he, more of a He knows where thing. my kids' toys are supposed to go. Yeah. So I'd have to train that and teach that. I think it's a novelty thing right now. It totally But is. this is version one. I like know. What's version 10 going to be? Sure. You know? Then yeah. it's going to be kind of I mean, it is. It's, it's just, I'm really curious to see, like, I want to I want to meet somebody who buys it implements it into their house and then like okay what do you use i mean tell me do you guys know yeah. uh, what how, you would how does use it, it for sleep at night like where does it hang out you know like <laughs> in your room creep yeah, out. Be really give it a closet you know just, speaking yeah. of kids and and you know like the things that we sell and whatever and I, i'm going to give an example of the mistakes some of the mistakes we've made in the past because people are like oh you're alarmist and no whatever look i'm gonna doug i just sent you i just texted you a video and make sure to push mute there on the tv but i want you to watch this video and i'm gonna tell you guys what this is. And this aired in 19, I want to say 51. Okay. 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 And everybody was like, like people were so sure of this. This is when we were telling them that they were running pregnant, commercials. Pregnant women to smoke cigarettes? No. no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we were. They, I know. Dude, I know. But no, watch, yeah, watch this video. And, and this, by the way, the reason why I pulled this video up is my dad was telling me a story of when they were kids, uh, my grandfather, when he was a kid, what they used to do in, in uh. Sicily. But just this is the DDT. Yeah, bro. Listen, oh listen. Watch, hey, hey, look at this. This is a commercial, you guys. This okay. is like they were airing this to show the safety of this incredible <laughs> breakthrough. Like, like you know, what are they spraying? What are they spraying on the lawn? That's DDT. No, no, not just on the lawn. Isn't that DDT the stuff from from dynamite? No, 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 DDT? no, no. That's TNT. Look, oh. look, look. While they're eating. On it's all just, over their food. <laughs> what but is it's that? Totally it's totally safe. Eating. What is DDT? It's a, it was a pesticide. pesticide. Is it herbicide? Look at that. Just it spray pesticide? it on kids. Pesticide, I think. Yeah. Look at that. Just blast the kids. <laughs> oh, they, oh, my <laughs> God. That's dude. not real, is it? It's so yes. wrong. Yeah. Yes, so there's, dude. So there's somebody, uh, your, our parents' generation got blasted, but with someone. Yes. Yeah. Yes, they did. Wow. Doug's parents, for sure, 
went through that. And it was to kill lice, to kill pesticides. It's this incredible chemical. <laughs> it's it's so safe you can eat it. There were, actually there's Blasting videos. Blasting everybody with you it. You can find videos of people eating a pile of it to show how safe it was. By the uh, way, DDT causes cancer. Oh yeah, of course. So we know this. Yeah. But we That's were so hilarious. sure. That's hilarious. We kid. were so sure that we were blasting children in the face with it. <laughs> so my we had popcorn ceilings of asbestos and like, you know, dude. just everything in our house. So I was having this conversation with my dad. So my dad says when my grandfather was little that there were trucks that would drive yeah. through Lead the neighborhood paint, and they would else. just blast the kids now, with DDT. Okay, so how much do you think this mattered? Back to kind of what I was talking to you about being at a calorie surplus and then like these things affecting your body and sensitivity of it. Yeah. Cause there's obviously there's a whole, a whole generation of people who got blasted with this stuff and that we're fine. They lived to 95 and we're totally fine. So is it, it like, what is really bad is you add up all these chemicals and things and dyes and so like that. And in the context of being obese and overeating and over consuming is the recipe for cancer disaster. Like that. Or do you think if the person is was a healthy person and stayed fit and active, yeah. and then they they suck down all this DDT, you think that person's less at risk? I mean, uh, obviously they're less. Of at course, risk. yeah. If you're but healthy, I mean, is it, or does it does it not matter as much? No, no, no. Of course, if you're healthy and if you're healthy and fit, your your body is more resilient to toxins. Period. Right. End of story. Now it depends on the yeah. toxin too. There's some healthy toxins. Limbic system. Yeah, you can be as fit as you want, uh, like asbestos. Like go ahead and be as fit as you want. Go breathe that in a bunch of times or lead. Um, and you're going to have some problems. But of course, of course, if you're fit and healthy, um, you're going to be more resilient to, to so all So the reason things. why I bring this up is because I know that, especially in the wellness community, there's so much talk around the, the dyes and the, um, you know, chemicals and on plastic, you know, and the xenoestrogens. Like, this is like just crazy. They bombard you with this. But are we, are we spending so much time talking about that to the wrong people because of course they're they're speaking to themselves and then the small percentage of people that are wellness fanatics like them when really the people that are like super obese and overweight it's like that's not going to move the needle so much if they quit their fruit loops with fucking purple dyes and all this stuff yeah. like that if they need to get healthy and fit and that's going to move I the needle I think that's more what we learn from the covid uh pandemic in general it's like yeah you got to be fit and healthy to be more resilient towards these uh, you know, unknowns that are going to, you're yeah. going to face at some point, yeah. right? Like if it's, well, look, you know, if it's toxins or if it's a disease or if it's anything, like the only way your body's going to be able to withstand it and process it and move on is if you're like optimally healthy. First of all, I think if we identify a common ingredient to be an excitotoxin for the brain or to, to, to increase your risk of cancer or thyroid disease or to have, uh, uh, you know, be as, as xenoestrogen. I'm naming things that are legit, right? I think it's responsible to remove them, sure, sure. period, from the market. Sure. Um, that being said, like, uh, the way we communicate it, and I'm not just saying this because it's us. I don't think, I just, just think we're awesome. We trained people for decades. Here's what happens when you train people for decades. If you really care about people and you train people for a long time, you end up learning what works. Like, cause you go through trial and error. Like I've been training people for five years. Why is yeah. everybody getting the weight back afterwards? Why isn't this working? You got to figure things out. And what you end <laughs> up figuring out is, is to not major in the minors. Yeah, yeah. And, and also I can give one piece of advice that would take care of all this. Plus help with obesity. I can just tell people avoid heavily processed foods. Right. Guess yeah. what? I just told you to avoid all the dyes, all the, dyes all the preserve, yeah. but you're also going to get leaner. You're also going to be more yeah. fit because you eat less as yeah. a result. Uh, I guess that's calories. the point I'm totally. trying to make. Yes. Right? Yeah. It's like, sometimes this, this conversation is like, it's, it's so moot because you're, we're really only communicating to the people that are already fitness fanatics yeah. that maybe are trying to get to the next layer of this. It's like if the average person just took a couple of these yeah. pieces of advice, hey, go strength, strength one or two yeah. times a week, stay away from processed food as much as you possibly can, try and always eat whole food, hit your protein intake, I'll fucking radically change your life. You will. And radically you, change your but life. But you know what's, what's important about this too, Adam, is who do you think the major consumers are of these dyes? Adults or children? Those children. So yeah. as parents, I think sometimes we think... I know parents, like, I think sometimes you think, oh, it's just my kid. And kids are picky and whatever. But it's good to know because you'll start to connect the dots. I think a lot of parents will see their kids act a certain way and they'll be like, well, that's just Timmy. 
Like, I guess that's a good point because I, I, I always think that's interesting when I have friends and stuff like that and they don't even notice that. They don't like, notice. They're, I'm like, dude, you you know why your kid is being a shit right now, right? You just let him eat fucking four fuck, uh, cupcakes. Like, yeah. No no wonder he's acting Listen, like that. Like, I, that is like, cupcakes. like, you may as well, let, a, <laughs> may as well let him do a line of cocaine too and see how he goes <laughs> from there. It's like, let's see how he does. I mean, I'm serious. Like, it's crazy that you, but that there's parents that are like that naive to cupcakes what? like cocaine. Well, but here, okay, and I, I don't remember if it was you or somebody else who actually put this into perspective, and I always reuse this when communicating this. It's like, what do you feel like when you, have you ever sat down? I have. I've sat down before and binged a, a whole thing of Oreos or something crazy. Like, how do you feel from that? Yeah. I mean, it Ugh. wrenches your gut. You yeah, probably yeah. get a headache from it, yeah, like yeah. crash. Like, okay, when you give a kid three or four cookies that they're as big as their they, hand yes that's that's as relative to that do you think about that for know, a second because would and, you, and if you would you ever let your would you ever sit your kid down and be like here have the whole box bro, of yeah. oreos like, like no you wouldn't bro, when we, but that's sugar. what you're doing when, when we buy ice four. cream when we go buy ice cream they have the kid size cup yeah you barely and you look at it you look at the kid size like oh that's a little bit of ice cream but then put it next to your toddler and go oh that would be like me holding a bucket Yes, because my my tongue was tiny. Size is it. Yeah, like that's a kid size. It's like you doing a five gallon bucket of ice cream. Oh yeah, I yeah. split a kid one between me and my two little ones, and I make sure to eat the majority of it, and I give uh -huh. them a little. That's bit how. I mean, yeah. I have the, the way I introduced sweets my, to Max was, we would not only will we get like the smallest portion size, but then I would make him even share it with me. Yeah. Here, you can have a bite. You yeah, know, it's yeah, like yeah. that's a that's it. It's the like dad tax. But and but you uh, you don't make that connection to their behavior. Like of course, giving them something like that that's is going to yeah. change that. So, yeah. so I, I guess that's but, a that's a good point. It because is. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a, less about the the adults making these changes for themselves for obesity or getting in shape. It's more about recognizing you're building these habits in your kids. Dude. And so pay attention. And to also all pay the and also pay attention. Like if you're giving them excitotoxins, right? If they're so I'm I, I'm my wife is is extremely wise and connected to the kids. She's always making these connections before I can. And she points them out and then I'll all pay attention then when she points it out and I'm like, holy cow, well, my kid has that one thing. Like we had lollipops, right? We use lollipops for church. That's how we get our kids to sit down through the service, which still doesn't work, but it's better than nothing. Well, we were getting the dumb, dumb lollipops, okay? And it, we just noticed like when they ate the cherry ones or whatever, like they just acted crazy afterwards. And my daughter wouldn't go down for her nap and my wife connected it. She's like, oh, it's gotta be, the dye. So then we ended up buying the or organic ones. Like pay attention to the stuff because excitotoxins, they're they're called excitotoxins because they're not good for the brain. A developing brain could develop differently as a result of constant exposure to these things. Or that that might seem alarmist. That's my theory, and I I'd stand by that. But or or you might have a kid that's being medicated or labeled ADD mm -hmm. who might not be ADD. No. It might be that they are reacting and responding to something that they're eating on a regular basis. It's yeah. funny. There's studies that show, consuming. well, they'll take ADD kids, have them be active and yeah. change their diet. And a significant portion of them notice reduction in their in their symptoms. Yeah. So it's like, of oh, man. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Are you struggling to get a flat midsection, a flat tummy? We have a free flat tummy guide. In there, we give you strategies, techniques, exercises, nutrition tips on how to get a flat tummy. You can get it right now. It's totally free by clicking on the link in the description below. Speaking of kids, I got to tell you this story happened to Katrina this morning. This literally happened this morning on the school. She called me. She normally doesn't call me on the way to work, and she called me. I always like kind of freak out because I know that she's taking my son to school, and I get a call right away. I'm like, oh, God, like, what happened? Oh, what's, yeah. yeah, I always, what's so I'm always, like, I always pick up right away because like, normally we would text little yeah. short stuff, and so, but it wasn't. She was like calling me. to like She was like, you could tell her I could feel her beaming through the phone. I'm like, what are you all? She's yeah. like, oh, my God, my day has been made today. <laughs> I'm just like, what happened to you? She's like, well, I just dropped Max off at school and you know, his school is uh K through uh, uh, high school all yeah, the way yeah. to senior in high school. Yeah. So there's high school kids that come there and she goes, I got stopped by a high school girl today. And she uh, came over and said, excuse me. And she stopped and she goes, hi, I just wanted to tell you like how beautiful you are. And I see you come here every day and you're always in a cool car and you, your son looks so cute and you just, you're so pretty. Really? And I just, I want to grow up to be like you one day. Wow. Yeah, I told her that. <laughs> Are you sure it wasn't a dude yeah. and she changed his story? Did you this girl? So what, I said, what's this guy look like? <laughs> <laughs> it was some guy. She's like, I'll change yeah, it a little yeah. bit so I can tell my oh husband. Oh my God. Happened. She was like, oh, over, wow. over the top. That's she, great. Oh, she was so excited to, to hear that. I guess she stopped to talk to the little girl for a little while. But I guess she's been seeing her come to school. 
every day and said that to her. That's I said, so great. So, yeah, so you I, know, it's, remember how I said this a while ago on the podcast, how <clears> like uh, one of the defined er- characteristics of a fit person who's older is they can't wait to mention their age. Mm-hmm. You're, yeah. Uh, so true. It happens every time at the gym. If I meet somebody at the gym or someone listens to the show and they're fit and they're like over the age of 40, oh, yeah. they can't wait. To tell oh, me, yeah. oh, hey, how you doing? So I listen to your Being show, by the way, I'm 65, 67. I'm 60. Yeah, yeah. and they, they want me to look at like, oh, yeah, you are? Wow, you look this <laughs> good. I've never looked this good. Yeah, I mean, it's, it kind of is like the ultimate flex, man. It I mean, is. If you, if how proud of your age are you when you're fit? That's right. When you're in your 50s plus and you still look really, really fit, and not to mention you're normally way off on that person's age. You think they, mm-hmm. they're way younger than what they are. I mean, you always say it. You say it really well on the show that like it's crazy how much that gap um, I mean, we all notice it in our age. We're in our early 40s. When Remember we were on that walk? No joke. I'm, we're being serious now, Doug. I always joke about your age. But remember we were on a walk? Was, I was like a few weeks ago. And then we all forgot Doug's age. And he told us. Yeah. Shocking. Almost yeah. 60. Sh- shocking. Almost 60. I yeah. can't believe that. Because I have family members his age. They don't look like Doug. They don't move no, like Doug. No. Not even close. Yeah. Big disparity there. It's like a different species. Like they're on medication. They don't have. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, Doug's out there working out with us. When we go create programs, he's staying up past, yeah. <laughs> yeah. past us. We're going to bed. I'm pretty convinced now too. When somebody like strangers see us, they don't know who we are. Uh, they would guess Doug to be one of the younger, <laughs> younger one guy. of the younger of us four. Definitely you're not guessing he's the oldest. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. Maybe he gets the middle guy. I don't know. But he definitely ain't getting the oldest no more. Yeah. <laughs> was, uh, yeah. I'm embarrassed to think that I might be that guy now. You're doing great. <laughs> hey, I got I got, before I uh, I forget, I want to um, I want to say something nice about one of our employees. We got a great staff. A lot of people don't see behind the scenes. We have this incredible team. Very much so. here at Mind Pump. And one of the people that works for us, Margaret, and yeah. she handles Customer people. Service. Will, yeah, people will call in. They'll have questions about programs, about reverse dieting. She's a certified coach. She's certified uh, uh, in several certifications. She knows her stuff. She knows our programs. And we get messages about her all the time. And I love her. She's hilarious. She's great. Uh, She's also, years ago, we held a kettlebell uh, contest here. She actually won it. This is before she even worked for us. Mm. So she's also a badass, right? But anyway, we're in our meeting. I'm doing my my weekly meeting with her and some of the other staff there. And I see a poster in the background. And, you know, while we're talking, I'm like reading it. I'm like, there's no way it says that. That's that's not right. There's got to be. I must be wrong or whatever. So at the very end of the- What does it say? (laughs) At the end of the meeting, I'm like, what is that? poster saying she kind of moves aside and it's a picture of benjamin franklin and then it says quotes like this is what he said it says tax this dick <laughs> what <laughs> what, <laughs> what? <laughs> like you can tax this dick. you want to tax me tax this dick i'm like margaret does that say what i think it says she goes yeah it says tax this dick i'm like what? wow <laughs> bro i like her even more yeah, that's, that's what i told her better. i like her even i'm like more. i don't know if i can like you anymore <laughs> oh no, i love you that's hilarious. she sent me a picture of it so oh sure not, is that a real quote he said no <laughs> oh. <laughs> to the british yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, really you may tax this yeah no no she said her 50 year old son got it for her Oh my god! Oh, it's bro, dude, I was, that's so funny. I was absolutely, uh, absolutely <laughs> dying, yeah. dude. Yeah. I have, I have the most random fact. Like, I seriously didn't know this. Maybe you guys knew this about Keanu Reeves, but like, I, I like the guy. I know Adam doesn't care for him too much as an actor. I think he's actor, just, bro. you know, he's definitely stays in his lane. But, he's uh, the best. Ne- he's, he's the best, best surfer. Ever. He's, he's the best surfer. surfer in every movie, dude. <laughs> he's, he's an action surfer. <laughs> <Yeah>. Whoa! <laughs> he's got moves. John Wick, dude. He was great, dude. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Six lines. Did you know he's a good athlete, though? Yeah. Was he a football player, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so, did you know that that the uh, Baltimore Ravens actually gave him uh, an opportunity to try out? I didn't know when? that. Yeah, when he was actually part of the replacements. So. I was just going to bring that movie up, and yeah. I was going to tell you, you know how you, so Katrina, this is when Katrina, I don't know if you guys do this or not. Katrina's an ex-athlete, so her and I love to, like, watch reality shows and stuff like that. Like, we all watch the stupid, what's the date one that yeah. all of us watch? Right. There's Whatever. a connection between this and sports? Well, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah okay. watch it. Hang in there. All right, all right. And there's always, like, a, a thing that they do. They get all these guys, all the guys together, you know, and then they're, like, throwing a ball. Oh, and we, oh. Katrina and I are always just, just like, roasting the, yeah, the oh, yeah. We're guys. always like, oh, let's see if this guy's ever thrown a ball before. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's just a dead giveaway. That's right? very revealing. And so my point to bring that out was I remember when he did that movie, you could see the way he throws Oh, you're like, oh, he's an athlete. He actually yeah, throws. You, you yeah. could just tell the way his Well, in, in John Wick, uh, you know, he, the martial arts moves and stuff that he does, he does some jujitsu and judo in there, which I'm versed in. Mm-hmm. They're not bad. 
It it's actually not, looks it's like terrible. He, yeah. It actually looks like because I see people. Well, do, he trains real hard. Like, I've seen a lot of the stuff. Like there's a guy down in L.A. that trains all the actors for like gun handling yeah. and like you know that kind of tactical stuff. And uh, he's always there. Like <laughs> Kennery's always like you know training all that stuff. So it's like at least you know you have a lot of the movements and stuff down. Not necessarily that he had any like military training, but. That surprised me. I didn't think like he was that good, you know. No, I didn't know. I didn't know he was that good. I do remember though watching that movie, and I'll I remember going like, oh, he probably played. Like I remember thinking that one when I watched it because I'm her and I are totally like that. Where because sometimes they cast uh, actors because they're great actors for yeah. a job, you know, and there's little roles where they have to do something, yeah. like that, and you watch them and you're like, oh god, that's like <laughs> that's. Oh, yeah, it's he also uh, you also see him throw the ball and play in uh, Point Break. Yeah, he does. That. Oh, he, yeah. So there's a scene in there too, Lefty. and and you're like, oh, I forgot okay, about like, that. Yeah, like he looks like he moves like an athlete. To me, it's just like so obvious. You know, when they, speaking they of athletes, you know what I'm watching time. right now on Netflix? Uh, the Vince McMahon. Oh, story. So good. Did you? Oh, I haven't started that oh, yet. Yeah, I want to check so that good. out, dude. Have you watched? Are you through it, or are you just now starting? So I was familiar with the pro wrestling regions and how the W back then WWF kind of took over. I don't know how they did it. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And then Hulk Hogan, that guy's just, uh, I mean, he, if, if Dude, it wasn't for him. He's the best. If it wasn't Come for on. him, they wouldn't have become. How far are you? Are you Hulk all the, I'm, on the, I'm almost done with the second episode. Uh, yeah, there's a lot. There's quite a lot. I think there's like five or six of yeah, those. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. really good. Yeah, Katrina yeah. and I watched it right away. I thought. Yeah, I've told you guys. I'm into all that stuff. Now, sure. I've told you. So it's funny. Back <laughs> in the 80s, uh, 80s in particular, I remember pro wrestling was trying to pretend like they weren't, like the, like they weren't scripted. Right, it was like no, no, no. It's like kind of this the secret that we don't really talk about. Later on, everybody realizes it's scripted, but it's not fake. It's not fake. They're actually throwing each other and you know getting hurt and all that stuff. That's all real. Yeah. So and now people know that nobody cares. But I, back then, remember John Stossel? He went to yes do investigative yes, reporting. Yes, yes. And he's like, just he gets to get the shit slapped out of him by uh, Diamond something. Yeah, Diamond Dallas Page it actually <laughs> blew out his eardrum. Dude, yes, that. dude, he, got he sued. slapped him so hard. He slapped his shit. And then again, how fake is that? Yeah. <laughs> and then there was a there was one there was a was talk like, show Ooh. there was a talk show where Hulk Hogan one of the guys had him put him in a front headlock. It's actually a guillotine choke. Yeah. And he choked him out. Yeah, yeah, he passed out. And the guy woke up and tried to like, you know, pretend like nothing happened while his head's bleeding. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those two <laughs> things almost bankrupted. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've told you guys the story of Hulk Hogan, right? How he became a pro wrestler. He went to a Japanese oh, yeah. wrestling school and uh -huh. the, and he was acting all cocky, big, blonde, jack guy. He got humbled, yeah. Oh, the Japanese instructor put him in a, in a heel hook and busted his knee. He came back real humble after oh, that. God. Learned all their yeah. That's a great series. That's a great series. I just finished watching. That. I mean, I told you before. I read the the, the Bret Hart. Yeah, the Bret Hart book is really good, and it's a little sad story too. I mean, what a crazy business to have watched. I mean, that's our generation. We watched that get built. <laughs> yeah. And what an empire it was. And you guys remember when we all went with Craig Caperso when yeah. I took you guys to that one event. That oh, had. it's so crazy. It's, it's like its it, own little like micro environment. Like Totally. It, it's just like everybody knows what's coming. Everybody knows well, the narrative and all this. And I'm like, going to make it. I'm going to guess right now. I didn't have one of these, but I bet you Justin did. Did you have the stuffed wrestler? Figurines right. that used to just you wrestle and tackle. About, did you yeah. have that? Yeah, That's that. Like, and I knew the it. Stretch Armstrong. Guy. I knew you did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I could see. I had the 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 blow up ones. Remember back in the days, huh? those the ones. Yeah, you punch it, or you oh, hit it, oh, and it, it pop back up. Or anything like that. that was like a doll that was like a dude doll. A you dude. know, like the action figure. But yeah, it was really a doll. You know. <laughs> I went as a kid yeah. at Arco Arena back when Arco Arena was a thing. Um, when I was, I want to say like fourth, fifth grade. And then I hadn't been again until we went. Yeah. And to see the difference of like, and the for me, I guess maybe the business side that I thought was so fascinating, like it was really interesting how it's got its own little ecosystem. It's it's literally, those events are like four or five hours long yeah. and that all the commercials- It's all self-promotion within yes, it. Yes, yes. It's just like, hey, we're promoting this it like was, product that we own. These the, so bright. Pro wrestlers so bright. are- some of the best athletes in the world. Period. These are massive, giant human beings doing crazy acrobatics and stuff. It's just, it's, it's wild. It's wild to see because they're so huge and then like flying off the. Have you ever felt the what, the ring? So when I was a kid, uh, we went to one wrestling show and I got I was able to touch the ring and I thought it would be like soft because they fall on it. It ain't soft, dude. No, uh -uh. It it's little, hard. It has a little hard bit of a spring to canvas, it, but it ain't. It's ain't. it's wood. Yeah, yeah. Underneath it's, still, that. it's still not soft. It's still not soft. <laughs> that you know? sucks. No, no. They get hurt all the time. Yeah. You know, in the, in the book they talk about too, like the the pride in. Um, in, so what they like how they measure by like Andre the Giant was known as one of the greatest wrestlers ever. Yeah. Part of why 
was because of how like delicate he was for how big he was. Yes. Yeah. So that and the uh, Ultimate Warrior was hated so much, right? He was like a f fan favorite he would for hurt a while, people, but he was terrible technique. And so like guys, and that was like always like a behind the Nobody scene like to wrestle. With yeah, him. that was like a behind the scenes shit talking thing. It was like, oh, like Vince McMahon made this guy really good, and he's the main guy now. We all got to wrestle him so that, and he's a shit wrestler, and they'd all be talking shit, you know. Uh, and then other guys, there's like this mutual respect. And then there's this kind of like if you wrestle with someone like that and he's not good technique, guys intentionally like hurting each other because the other guy's doing shitty yeah. stuff. Like so there's a lot of like behind the scene mm -hmm. like random stuff like that. I thought yeah. when I read the book it was really interesting. No, it's really cool. <coughs> by, by the way, are you is your favorite flavor the watermelon also? No, the, it is not. My favorite the cherry. I, so no. I told this actually on my series. Yeah. By the way, I found a new Mine's hat. a black cherry. So do this. Okay. Grapefruit. Oh, I did it. Warm grapefruit. I did it. Poured over ice. a tall glass of ice. So good. So good. So good. The most by refreshing the way, drink I've ever had. By the way, so they were talking about LMNT, if people aren't, aren't know. So they have these ready to drink cans, hmm. uh, which are going to, they're crushing. They're going to crush. They're very palatable, meaning they taste really good, although there's no sweetener, no artificial sweetener, no yeah, sugar. Really good flavor. It's because they're high in sodium. Sodium increases palatability. It's supposed to be, though. It's an electrolyte drink. They taste. Super good in the can. Yeah. Super, super good yeah. in the can. But, I did not, so have you tried mixed drinks with it? That I haven't. Katrina always says that. She's you like, throw little, some vodka in tequila, that? tequila or vodka and this will be perfect. Yeah. yeah no, I'm surprised heard. that, I wonder if bars are going to start using something like this because there's no sugar in it. Yeah. So it's like a low calorie mixer. For, it'd, be, it'd be interesting to see probably on the, more on the And industry. it makes sense to have electrolytes anyway when you're drinking alcohol. Yeah. Ooh, I just create a new. You should do it. You're more of the drinker on that. I'm just telling you guys the hack I would have never thought is to intentionally take a warm drink but and pour yeah, it over the that. ice because it just dissolves. Adds a little bit of water. It adds just a little bit of water yeah. to it and it cools it and it just makes it the most. And a grapefruit, I've, I've done it with all of them now. I think yeah. grapefruit, which I didn't think I'd like that much, for some reason is like the perfect, the perfect it's, it's balance. It's really good. All right, so uh, how do you guys feel? We've already made this commitment. It's already happening, but I got to ask you guys on air. How do you feel about letting people in on one of the most private things that we that we do here uh, at Mind Pump, which yeah, is I'm great actually, programs. Might as well. You know, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm actually- Because that's a process. I'm concerned about how much you tell people that we're going to do because I don't want to overcommit on what they get to be a part of because- They'll get snapshots. Yeah, like, because I think like you- Moments. I think you have to understand that we can't have them- uh, we're, It's a two-day event. We're there for eight hours. Like, you're not gonna, we're not going to live stream It's not stream like a 24-hour- Yeah, yeah. No, it's like <laughs> we're, we're, we're creating a program for 18 hours. Essentially. Yeah. yeah. So we're not going to live stream for 18 hours, but I think the idea of bringing the audience in on the creative process, especially in the their beginning, feedback is gonna the be beginning great. when we're talking yeah. about, you know, what is the name of it? What's the overall structure going to be? What's the target market look like? Having them like what, what are some of the core things yep. that are going to be in it? I think having the engagement of the audience, getting them to see that creative process will be very fun. Yeah. Um, and the first time we've ever done it, totally. uh, I hope it doesn't flop. It's going to be live <laughs> uh, on Instagram on the 13th, 6 PM on the mind pump media, uh, page uh, on Instagram. My still one of my favorite all time memories, period, end of story, not just with mind pump, but just favorite memories ever was creating, uh, maps prime with you guys. Uh, what yeah. a what yeah. a, that was we, a wild yeah weekend. Well, we created. <laughs> you make it sound like crazy. <laughs> What'd you guys do? <laughs> no, no. Creatively, less about the yes. drugs, yeah, Justin, not, more about the no, there was stuff. <laughs> it. We when we were th that was the one time we always get you know we'll always run into obstacles. We'll create a program and sometimes we'll get stuck, and we'll we'll figure it out. And twenty minutes later, we typically figure it out. This was a day of gridlock. A whole day we were stuck. Um, yeah. how we're going to do, how we're going to create a program that people can use to assess themselves after being trainers, and understanding assessments. Like, how do you do this? A whole day we were stuck. Remind me, tell me the next day. Remind me, I believe it went like this, right? And I, and I, so I have a theory on why this was too. It went, uh, Maps and a blog, obviously you created first, but Maps Performance was the first one together. Maps Aesthetic came after that yes. and then Maps Prime, right? Uh, did Isn't we, right? we did. They, yeah. I think that's the, I think that's the order. Yeah. Now, the theory to me on why that was so special to your point is that Anablock was already done by you, so not a big deal. Uh, Maps Performance, totally Justin's wheelhouse, inspired by that. Yeah. He steered that program. Maps Aesthetic, inspired by my co mm -hmm. competition. I kind of steered that. This was the first one that was like so unique that we all had to come together and also very challenging because it's like, how do we create an assessment tool yeah. That for the average person, so the average person can use it, and also coaches and trainers can use it, and it's not overly complicated. That 
Yeah, yeah, you're not looking at little everything deviations. Everything, as an example, was so comprehensive and <clears throat> robust. Like there was systems. I mean, the only thing to compare it to were like behind paid walls from all these physical therapists. Like yeah, that was like all the assessments we were going on. And it's just it was it was crazy. It was actually it was also uh, was easily the most challenging thing we created of all yeah. the stuff that we created. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was easily for a whole day. Like a whole day, we 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 came up with this idea. In fact, we almost changed ideas because we were stuck. At this, like, how are people going to assess themselves? Well, I, I still don't know anybody else that's done something like it. I know there's examples of like FMS and like stuff like that, but it's not. The but those same. are certifications. I know those are like full certifications. Yeah, yeah. Right. So there's not really anything out there. Like, there's tons of programs that people no. have written. That's not like that's not unique. Doug still has the video of uh, of when we finally came up with the idea for the compass. I wish we would put together a compilation of like all that old stuff. <laughs> yeah, I think we're due. I think we're due for putting some of that. Do you guys remember I had the papers on the window? We were up yeah, in the hotel yeah. room. And I had, so I told uh, <laughs> I had to write them out like I'm like I'm figuring out a crime. So you know yeah, I, mean? yeah, I yeah. told my I told my Hampton group that I was with this last this last week about uh we're there were a lot of them were asking kind of the origin story of us and like you know what like when the business first started and the programs i'm like you guys i was like you guys have no idea like i said we have we had programs where i was in a ball cap goatee and sunglasses <laughs> at a park yeah. doing exercises no, we, we rented Curls like some, rubber we rented some old lady's house in sacramento and yeah. did freaking hey. like it did videos on right when airbnb was just kicking off yes. like yeah. it was only like porn people yes. were like doing this and we we're like <laughs> filming you yes. know like videos really do you remember i was doing i was i was using the couch to anchor myself to demonstrate like a type of just sitting race, on the other side but the couch would come up so just didn't lay on it yeah. so it the video i'm doing it just as late like, <laughs> oh the my god and, and uh so she she actually said you and know, that's in our program she you bought the me, program we need, we, we need to do a little compilation yeah. of like where it's currently at and then like little like little chopped up pieces of all the old pieces of like programs and content and stuff that we use back in the days she goes she does that all the time she's uh, been in the industry for a long time herself too and she's like the, your audience will really enjoy it because it's how far it's come. And it's also really good for the fact that we're teaching coaches and trainers today, right? That's a big part of yeah. the business now. And we're moving that direction. It's really good for them to see that because sometimes they overcomplicate and overthink. They think it has to be perfect. 100%. Yeah. It won't be perfect. No matter how perfect you think it's it is, just the, get it out. It's not the beauty, the aesthetic of it, the and, branding. No. And it, trust, that's none of it. Trust us. We take our own advice. If you see what these programs look like when we first released them and sold them and people <laughs> bought them, and you watch the exercise demos with Adam. Not just a few people. A Adam lot of people were buying these. <laughs> yeah, and dude. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the key <laughs> is the, the key was in the meat, right? Is in the in the value of it, in the yeah. value of the business. Like yeah. that is it wasn't what, the production. Yeah, no. And that's I, I try and communicate that to everybody is that you know, the the production, the branding, the 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 aesthetic of the yeah. business can evolve and 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 get and grow into the brand i said but initially it's more about connecting with totally. people adding value totally. to their lives lean into that and then the other stuff will come together i think sometimes we focus so much on that and then you get the paralysis by analysis you're just so oh what about this or i need to make an app and it needs to look this good and i gotta spend this much money it's like no you should have seen how bad and rough it was yeah. <laughs> when we first started yeah. and so we, we did it just as long as it works yeah yeah, yeah. what do you uh shout out let's do the um what was it the oh live stream we oh, did we did oh. We oh, shouted it out already. Oh, there you go. Live stream is 11, 13. Uh, 6 p.m. Pacific at Mind Pump Media on nowhere Instagram. Nowhere to register for it. They just need to show up. Yeah, just show up. Just, just show on the, up. our Instagram page. Just right. check it out. Probiotics have proven health benefits. Good for your skin, your energy. They can help sometimes with depression and anxiety. Definitely help with your digestion. Anyway, there's a company called Seed. They make the world's best probiotic. This is the only one I use regularly. Go check out their product, The Daily Symbiotic. Go to seed.com forward slash mind pump. Then use this code 25 mind pump. That'll give you 25% off your first month's order. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Primo from California. Primo, what's up, man? What's happening? Hey, morning, guys. How's it going? How are you guys doing today? Good. How you doing, bro? Right, dude. How can we help you? Good, good, good. Uh, first and foremost, I want to give you all the thanks. You guys are super entertaining. Love all the info that you guys put out make it easily digestible for me and again just thank you for all you guys do um so i'll just get right into my question um i'm 37 years old i've been um avid rock climber for a long time and mainly my question revolves around uh strength training to support my rock climbing um i know 
there's been a few rock climbers on the show in the past and we kind of all have a similar plight. It's like, thank you for your program. Thanks for the muscle. It's, <laughs> it's definitely, uh, made climbing a little bit harder. So, um, I ran maps anabolic. I finished maybe about five or six weeks ago. Uh, definitely saw strength gains and composition changes. It was great. I was doing that two days a week with one day a week of climbing. Normally I'd climb maybe uh, two to three days a week, but I reduced the climbing to kind of focus on the strength uh, gains. But as soon as I finished uh, MAPS Anabolic, went to maybe one day of kind of uh, maintenance strength training and two days of climbing, it's I'm still seeing uh, a hindrance in my performance in climbing. I'm maybe just getting adjusted to this new body weight um, or just maybe having trained in a way where it's not super functional or, uh, for the, for the climbing. Um, so my main question kind of revolves around, is there a way to strength train, um, to gain like maximal strength without actually gaining too much weight? Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't yeah, you, there is. Wouldn't mm-hmm. you guys say uh maps OCR probably be a better appropriate program? <laughs> yeah, that's, that would be one Rick of them, except the sure. volume on that is so high, especially if you're going to be climbing yeah. uh, quite a bit. So yeah. So here's what happened, right? You built muscle and you built strength. You gained eight pounds of lean body mass. And I'm going to guess a lot of that went to your legs. Uh, and when you're, when you're rock climbing, um, you need a lot of stamp strength, stamina in your hands, right? Your forearms, your biceps, your back, you need good shoulder mobility, uh, and and you want mobile legs. You don't want big, <laughs> necessarily strong legs. Yeah. And so, if you look at like top rock climbers, they kind of look like spiders, right? They're they, they're longer limbs and well developed forearms, biceps a little bit, lats, uh, but not very big uh, lower bodies. If your goal is to maximize rock climbing, the best thing you could do is rock climb a lot, <laughs> and the second thing you could do is work on balancing out some of the areas where you can create uh, imbalances. Now, this is a very specific goal that you have. Uh, it, your, your goal is like, I want to get better um, at rock climbing. So what I would do, if you were my client, I've trained a couple rock climbers. And what we used to focus a lot on was we would do core strength training. We would do isometric type stuff. So like overhead holds, um, carries, uh, because that translated very well. The lower body work that we would do really focused on range of motion and mobility, not so much on trying to build maximal strength, uh, unless we could do that and not see too much muscle gain, which is really hard to, to see. And then you would control any weight gain with nutrition. And you can get stronger while minimizing muscle gain by kind of controlling calories. And so that just looks more like central nervous system strength adaptations. So I think if you're going to rock climb two or three days a week, about one day a week of strength training uh, is is good. And it's going to look like 20 minutes of mobility, maybe 30 minutes of strength training. That's that's going to be the okay. ideal routine for, for what you're doing. Yeah, basically I was trying to get the most out of the one day of strength training that I will be doing. And, you know, I, I bought performance, I bought symmetry, and I'm looking in both. I'm like, oh, that would be great. That would be great. Mm-hmm. How do I incorporate it all? I started to get the def- uh, kind of decision fatigue about what to do on that one day. And I've kind of just been living in like maps anabolic phase one on that one day, but somehow it doesn't feel like it's no fully supporting the climbing. Yeah. No, it's not in, in, in climbing with an extra eight pounds of, of, of muscle on your body, even though you're stronger uh, in relationship to the gym exercises, the ratio of strength that would translate to rock climbing to the weight mm-hmm. obviously wasn't beneficial. Because what you're noticing now is kind of overuse type <coughs> injury uh, type feelings. The, yes, ex- the, yes, the exercises definitely. I like for you are uh, windmills. I like uh, a bent press. I like overhead carries uh, quite a bit. Um, to be honest with you, I think maps old time might actually translate well. The Absolutely. only thing the only thing is I would limit it to one workout a week. Yeah. I wouldn't do because a lot of those exercises I think would translate well to you. And then I would just be careful with the lower body volume because the, the more muscle you gain on your legs uh the less you're going to be able to perform as a rock climber yeah it's high tension exercise like turkish get-ups and things where you're still functional and yep. that and so i like i like those suggestions a lot and the isometrics are huge uh for that so if you saw in like symmetry in the phase one uh you know if you could pull elements of that but i think 
overall at old time, it, the way it's structured, I think that's probably going to be the best match for at least getting you to load a lot of these <clears throat> unconventional type movements uh, with high tension. Primo, are you in the uh, the private forum yet? No, I'm not. I'm going to no. have Doug give you access to that. And since you already kind of mm -hmm. own these programs that we're talking about, it would be great if you, based off of what you're hearing from us, you put together kind of your, uh, what you think would be an ideal workout or day. And then the boys and I can change or modify or give you the thumbs up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like, that so okay. do so, you have old time? I do not have old time. I, I that was a curveball to me. I, yeah. I didn't, wasn't sure that old time was going to be kind of, uh, suggested. I thought maybe power lift or no. Maybe the performance route, but yeah, no, that's, performance that's, is I'd great. Be down to try that for sure. Performance is great for overall athleticism. Yeah, most, and the mobility. In most sports, okay, so most sports require uh, a decent amount of lower body explosive strength and power. And I say most. There are two sports where that actually becomes a problem sometimes: swimming and rock climbing. Mm -hmm. Swimmers and rock climbers don't want massive, powerful, strong legs. But every other sport typically involves running, uh, jumping, that kind of stuff, where you do kind of want uh, some of that to a certain extent. Uh, but yeah, if you look at like rock climbers, like the ideal rock climbing body is uh, legs that have great mobility and stamina that are very skinny because <laughs> you're lifting mm -hmm. your legs the entire time, yeah. uh, you know, with your upper body and really, really big hands, right? That would be the other thing. Uh, it's tough. Want. I get it. I know when you love a sport, but then simultaneously you also want to look jacked doing it. You know, it's like mm -hmm. <laughs> it just mm -hmm. un unfortunately. I mean, I get it. I, this was me with basketball my whole life. Like I love the sport so much and didn't want to let it go. Yet at the same time, too, I wanted to be this big buff guy, and they just don't go. You know, there's a part of this too is a bit of like you, you know, realizing that kind of letting. It's not that we can't, I think, create a workout that will benefit you, but it's also going like, hey. The more I move in this direction of wanting to be more buff and jacked and muscular, I'm probably going to be not as good of a rock climber, just kind of how it is. Yeah. Uh, so what, the way I look at it is that I feel like I, I'm still don't, I'm still not past my rock climbing prime. So might as well use this time to like still yeah be as I, strong as a climber as I can, and then you know later on I can, I, I agree. You know, focus on the body and looks later. Sure. I, but, think, uh, I think that's a smart strategy. But so yeah, so uh, with that in mind, uh, you know, I had this kind of goal of climbing v10 outside outdoors i don't know if that means anything to you guys before i'm 40 that gives me three years and is it okay to do this kind of slow incline of strength or is it do i kind of have to period it like phase in the strength training or like kind of do the no. whole seasonal thing or no. is it can i do this like one day a week slow ramp okay. up yeah one day a week you're fine yeah. you know um with rock climbing you're you're, you're look it's so much of it is technique and skill i you know this i don't need to tell you this so much of it is technique and skill. So majority of your time will be spent rock climbing. And then what you want is you want the kind of strength that you can apply uh, from all kinds of different angles. So, so, so that's why I like strong ma uh, maps uh, old time. There's a lot of this kind of rotational pressing and strengthening and, and, strengthening and gripping. Yeah. Lower body, you want really strong hip flexors that you can use from any angle. Uh, you want strong feet and strong toes. That's a whole nother uh, conversation. Um, and you want really incredible shoulder mobility because there's, you're going to be putting your shoulders in positions that you could cause injuries if you exert yourself. So your workout's going to be like 20 minutes of mobility with three exercises. That's what it's going to look like. It's going to look at three exercises. And that's with about three days a week of rock climbing. Yeah, I didn't even remember uh, MAPS uh, Performance Advanced would also be a great call oh, yeah. to this because it does – you could you could structure it so you add in your rotational emphasis or grip specific uh, skill training. And this is something that uh, – you don't have to go super intense with it. You just drill these like throughout the week if you're not rock climbing. Uh, and then you add in your foundational one – foundational workout a week so that would be plenty too that's a great option for i mean primo the move to me is to utilize I think adam said the right thing yeah well because we're throwing so many great ideas at you and i hope i hope you don't walk away going like well that fucking <laughs> didn't help me i got you know, i'm more confused than i was when i called these fuckers so do this uh you've heard us talk about all these different programs we're going to send you old timey i'm going to give you free access to the forum you sit down, write what you think would be uh, what you hope to be a good workout, and then put it in the forum, and the guys and I will look over it. And then if we think you should add 
some things or take away some things, we, we'll do that for you. And so you got a good a good structure, at least to get you going for a few months, and then we could talk about phasing other things in down the road. But use that forum like that. That'll be very valuable. Right on, right on. Thank you so much. Yeah. You got it, man. Uh, yeah, last thing I just want to say, maybe, maybe Justin, I know, you know, your, your, uh, your sons were starting to get out of gymnastics and looking for something else to do. Uh -huh. I was really wanted to kind of get in there like, you should try rock climbing because it's a great transition. It's, uh, you know, like gymnastic is like an execution of movement and uh -huh. like rock climbing is like an expression of movement. And I don't know, I thought it'd be really cool for your son I to try out, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll pitch that to him. We'll see if, uh, you know, that's an interest of theirs. But, yeah, I, I love it. I think it's a great way to, uh, yeah, express, you know, that end range strength and, and really challenge yourself. So, cool. Right on. Right on. All right, Primo. Thank you, guys. We'll see, so you in the, we'll see you in the forum, buddy. Take care. Right on. All right. Keep it up, guys. Thank you. <clears throat> I remember, uh, I don't remember what it was. I read this article. It was so well written about athletes and their their per athletic, athletic performance carryover to <laughs> other sports. And rock climbing wasn't in there because I don't think that's like one of the most popular sports. So I don't even think they considered it. But they said the worst, at, the best athletes at swimming, are the worst athletes at everything else because yeah. the 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 polymorphisms, so the polymorphisms that make you so good at swimming, like short, yeah. skinny it's legs, not an advantage anywhere. long yeah. torso, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like it makes you terrible outside of the water. Totally. And I, I thought it was interesting, but it's it's a good thing to consider because. Most sports, you want powerful, strong legs and hips. That's just a fact. Yeah. Some sports, you want mobile, stable, you know, lower bodies, uh, but getting them bigger kills you. And rock climbing is one of them. Wow. You get big ass, you know, you get big legs and you go try to climb. <laughs> I'm I mean, not doing the, so well. The, the the biggest challenge here was he had so much success with MAPS Anabolic. Of course. Because <laughs> yeah, if he had uh, limited success or what, didn't do very well, eight pounds on a small frame guy already is yeah. like That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. That's, and I, I guarantee you a lot of it went to his, his hips. And his, yeah, yeah, his yeah of course. Yeah. It's the biggest But this is a one. great functional strength conversation when people talk about functional strength. Yeah. Functional for what? Yeah. Because that eight pounds of muscle- Specificity. Made him more functional for the exercise of MAPS Anabolic. Made him more functional probably for the everyday world. Not for rock climbing. Yeah, yeah. Our next caller is JM from Canada. What's up, man? How can we help you? Hey, how you doing? What's happening? Good. Good. Thanks for having me on. So I, I don't know how this works. I just I, I appreciate you guys having me on. I don't know if you want me to go over what I already emailed in or Yeah, you please. Yeah. How you have to say you? you have to say a few nice things about each one of us individually and then you can ask your question. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Just yeah, go through <laughs> your email. Really we can breeze past that. Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Well, uh, I started working out in December 2021 on my own. Um, I did the Bigger, Leaner, Stronger program for a while, went with a coach, and I went down the journey of uh, cutting, and I got down to like 158 pounds at my smallest, and I was trying to build muscle and lose fat, the, the same old story. Um, cut to more recently, I hired a coach that I met through the Mind Pump Facebook group, his name is Max Hansen. He's been really integral in me uh, making some pretty big changes in the last little while where he took me from 2000 calories to 3000 calories a day. Um, still a major focus on protein. And we talked a lot about TRT. I started on TRT and prior to starting working out with him in July, I had the tennis elbow issue, which is still ongoing. So that's pretty well what I wanted to talk to you guys about today was just, first of all, how it, how amazed I am after three years of working out that I've seen most of my gains in the last like couple months just from actually eating um, and seeing the performance changes in the gym. Um, but now I'm starting to see some benefits from the TRT that I believe from research from just, you know, Googling it and talking to my coach, it seems that maybe the muscles are strong, but my tendons and joints are not. So like my tennis elbows hanging around and now I'm like got sore joints and stuff and inflammation. So I wanted to get your feedback on all that. Yeah, it's un it's unlikely that the TRT because you're on replacement dose, right? You're not taking like bodybuilder doses of steroids. Uh, no, I was in the low 200s on my test. Uh, I'm 45, and then I did another test properly through a hormone clinic, and and they showed that I was actually under the range. So they put me on 100 milligrams twice um, per week, so two doses of 50. Okay, and that's brought you up to the more the, the kind of the middle, I'm assuming. Yeah, it's a real low dose. Um, no side effects. I don't know yet because it's uh, it's been six weeks. So oh, okay, okay. Until I get my first labs. Yeah, they'll adjust it. Okay, so um, it's unlikely that it's the testosterone. Uh, so when you see studies that show that testosterone uh, or anabolic use can contribute to tendon rupture, 
um, it's high doses. And the, and the reason being is because the anabolic effect of, of those high doses is much more pronounced in muscle than it is on tendon and ligament. So you get like this dramatic increase in strength. Yeah. And the ligaments and tendons can't this keep up. This is mobility stuff, yeah. dude. For you, this is probably mobility stuff and probably means you need to phase into some different either rep range or style of training. This happens to me when I get lots of strength gains in a low rep range and I just stay there for too long. Then I start to feel it more in my joints. So what I end up doing is backing way off on the weight, going higher reps, slowing the reps down. And that typically makes a difference. And I also drop the volume. That typically works. And then adding mobility. And, and, you know, tennis elbow, in my experience, can be solved many times, not all the time, but many times, with deep tissue massage right on the right on the, the top and the bottom of the forearm. Um, and and uh, just, uh, just being real careful with the amount of volume that I'm doing and sometimes skipping heavy pulling exercises uh, and curling exercises. That, that tends to fix it in most people. I've worked with a lot of clients who, who've had that. So mm -hmm. I think you probably need to switch into a different style of training for a little while. Yeah, yeah that's actually, uh, this mirrors what we just talked about with my my coach, Max, because we were talking about that exactly. So we, we've, we've gone from five days a week to four days a week, uh, maybe an extra 10 minutes per workout on those days that I am working out. And I'm doing higher reps, like you said. And um, he, he's really been good at explaining to me, like you, you have to realize that even though you can get to a high amount of reps with a heavier weight, if you're eating more food, you've got more energy, more gas in the tank, it's not necessary to get to the the full muscle failure in order to build a no, physique. No, no, definitely no, not. not at all. You, you also will benefit. So do you have a prime pro? Yeah, I've got prime pro. So I would do the wrist cars and shoulder uh, stuff sh yeah. sh like wall circles yeah. and wrist cars before you start. Especially any upper body stuff. If you're doing any, uh, any upper body stuff. You should do it every day, but if you're doing any upper body stuff, before you go into your workout, do the wrist cars and the the uh, wall circles for your shoulder. This will help. And I don't know if you're familiar with like rifle flips or some other moves that will go straightly straight to that muscle too. That's probably flared up. Rifle flips. Okay. I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah. If you go on our, you, it's on our. Didn't we? Didn't you do them or I did yep, them? Yep. Uh huh. On the Mind Pump TV, right? Both. I did it. You did it. But yeah, it's you, you take a uh, mobility stick or a dowel bar or whatever, and, and uh, it will take you through that in terms of the how that stretch goes but yeah there's two videos on that yeah we have a few of them that we did for for tennis tennis or golf we put it under as tennis but, or golf i don't remember which one it was but i'll tell you what if you have access to a really good correctional massage therapist um the the best success i ever had with myself and with clients was having them see somebody who understood how to do this kind of work and it's it's gnarly i mean you'll sit on a table and they'll work on your forearms uh in a, in a pretty hard way but uh, it was the fastest results I'd ever seen for tennis elbow was when I had, when I had clients and in myself. When I did jujitsu for a while and heavy deadlifting, this was a problem that plagued me. And it took, I think, two or three sessions and it was gone forever. It never came back. But it was really gnarly. It was like 45 minutes just on my forearms of deep tissue work. Yeah, I had that done twice. Once in July, once in August, about two weeks apart. Then he recommended I wear this band that puts tension on the muscle because that that releases the amount of tension on the actual joint. Yep. Um, it, they also did um, therapeutic ultrasound, which breaks off the, the calcium yep. from the, just like the scar tissue. But it just seems to be coming back with a vengeance where now it's like instead of just a pulling or feeling bruised when you push there, the whole musculature is just hot, like it's burning inside. Yeah. And it can be even when I'm sleeping, I'll wake up to it. And uh, so th that's a major concern for me because I actually, I love working out and I'm just finding that I'm having to be so careful and even take like skip days sometimes. I'm, I'm worried it's going to affect my progress. It, well, um, it's yeah, gonna, it, it's going to definitely affect, go into the mobility. Dude, so remember this, this is a, this is a mind game for me too. I have to play mm -hmm. all the time. It, it's going to affect your progress if you don't fix it. Yeah. So, so it's better to fix it so than to get more this, difficult. This so was, you got to go light, go really light, use a light grip when you're pulling, be very mindful make of your the weight heavy. This, yeah. It's, this it's was mentality. crippling for me when I was bodybuilding and what solved it for me was one, I have a massage therapist for a wife. So she would dig in on that. And then before I would work out, I would do those wrist cars and shoulder and wall circles. And then I would actually do a quick little Indian club warm up. The Indian clubs did wonders for me to warm up with that before I go into my workout. So I would do the the massage therapy to open relax, open it up, break anything up, get me get me going and warm a little bit there. Then I would do the wall circles and wrist cars, and then do some Indian clubs and that like now. Now I know you're in Canada. Do you have access to uh, peptides like BPC one five seven or thymus and beta? 
I don't know. I was just lo- looking those up. I was going to ask you about that next. Actually, they're oh. they're they're marked as illegal by the Canadian Food and Health Inspection Agency, but there are um, different studies that are ongoing to to change that. There are ways to get it, but anyway, <laughs> uh, I, yeah, they they work. Yeah, BPC really works, and tennis elbow it really works well for it because it's kind of surface. Uh, you don't have to like get real deep with the BPC, um, and it really does work. But that's that's on you because you're gonna be, you know, you're in Canada, so I'm not telling you to break the law. You can you can message <laughs> Doug privately. He smuggles stuff over the borders, so <laughs> he keisters yeah, it. He's a mule. <laughs> <laughs> also on a wait list right now to get uh, platelet platelet rich plasma injection. So I don't know what you guys think about that. Have those you seen any success? Yeah, those are great. If you do platelet rich plasma in combination with BPC, it's yeah. like magic. Yeah. yeah. But it, it, I, here's the thing, though. It will come back if you don't do the other work, yeah, right? It. So if you, yeah. so all the stuff we're saying, that stuff will give you like good, good relief right now. But the thing that like got rid of it forever for me was staying on top of it before it would get bad again. And then once I kind of solved it, then the in, just warming up with Indian clubs did yeah. wonders. It's for rotation is really strengthening that rotation in the yes. wrist and the shoulder. And that way, it's going to help you stabilize uh, more effectively yes. when you lift heavier weights like that. Uh, and, and that's really what's pointing out is a weakness there. Okay. Yeah. I, I just started learning about Indian clubs on the weekend as well. It's where you're swinging it around your head, bringing it yeah. forward. Yeah. It's a heart yeah. swing what Adam's talking about. Yeah. So look that up a heart swing. Also too, you could do kettlebell halos uh, if you don't have access to mm-hmm. that. So that's another good option for that. But yeah, adding in more rotation, I'm telling you, and then strengthening and loading that is going to do wonders for From you. From an anti-inflammatory perspective, uh, you know, high EPA fish oil is always good. And then bromelain taken a few times a day on an empty stomach is a very powerful yeah. natural anti-inflammatory. Yeah. And that's available so, anywhere. But it's on an empty stomach. You take it with food, it just uh, it's just a digestive enzyme. But on an empty stomach, it's pretty effective at being anti-inflammatory. It's pretty inexpensive as a supplement. Okay, cool. And what about collagen uh, based protein, like 11, the ones that are 11 grams per scoop? Is that going to help me you're, you're, short term? If you're, if you're, you're eating high protein, it's not going to do anything for yeah. you. If you're eating your high protein, you're good. Even though it's a different kind of protein, it makes no difference. No, it makes a difference when protein is not at that upper limit. Then you see a difference, but you're taking, you got all those amino acids that are beneficial in the collagen, plenty of because yeah, of the bro- amount of protein you're utilizing it. Yeah. Um, would, would you guys have time to look at my before after pictures and my current pictures and give me some advice on, on maybe uh, caloric intake for the future? Uh, did you send them in yeah. with your question? If you don't I didn't, but I have them loaded in a tab and I can just hit share screen and show them to you. Sure. You don't see them. As long as you're dressed. Yeah. Don't, <laughs> don't send nudes like the last guy. It turned into our wallpaper here real quick. So Yeah, I'm curious to see what you guys think because it, it feels like the majority of my my progress has been right at the end of this three years of, of working out. So as you're pulling it up, we're looking at your physique, where it's currently at, where it came from, and then you're wanting what advice, like uh, what we think you should do, like diet wise, or like what's the what's what's the kind of question here? So I'm clear while we're looking at your picture. Yeah, for sure. So what? I, can you guys see that? Yeah. Yep. yep. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, you got yep. a lot leaner too. Yeah, a lot leaner. Yep. So this is December 2021, and yep. this is uh, July of this year on the right. What are the what's the weight difference? Is your body weight similar? You look like you got way leaner. So I'm 176 pounds, I believe, in the on the left, yeah. and I'm about 171 on the right. Ah, that, that's so awesome. Yeah, you gained. Okay, so you lost yeah, a lot of body fat and gained a lot of muscle. Yeah, it's uh-huh. awesome. Good for you. Right. That's that's what I was kind of wanted to. Oh, to way figure. more muscle. Look at your arm. I mean, I'm I I mean, I'm not I'm not changing the course at all with what you're no. doing. And I, you I, just started TRT track. I started TRT on August 24th, yeah. and then this is this is before the call today. Yeah, no, you're doing good, bro. Yeah, yeah, no, you're doing. No, it's good. all muscle, and yeah. you lost fat too. Yeah, yeah, you're doing good. No, you're you're doing exceptional. So, awesome. So, yeah. like, in the last uh, four weeks, I've gained four pounds. Now, that's not based on an average number. I weighed myself four weeks ago, and I weighed myself again this morning at one seventy seven. So, what I'm wondering is, you know, I'm going to weigh myself a couple more times to get a week average. But if I'm if I've only gained like two pounds in the four weeks, should I increase from three thousand no, calories? No, no, no. So here's what you have to understand is that especially if you're in the Goldilocks zone, if you hit that perfect number of calorie intake in relation to your training, then what you'll see sometimes is no movement on the scale, but you are building muscle and you're losing body fat. I mean, that's what you're what's happening. And the the way we can tell that so it's so obvious is that 
you you're only five pound difference on the scale, but you looked you have way more muscle and you're I mean yeah. look at your uh, low back fat in men is like the bet to me the I just did I don't know if you saw yesterday on my Instagram story I literally just posted about this I use my low back as my main guide of me getting leaner or putting body fat on to me that's the biggest spot that is obvious on guys yeah. is like that low it's back very visible it, and you've lost a ton right there but yet have have held weight by five pounds I mean. That's a perfect sweet spot, and, and you've so in other words, even though you're only five pound difference, uh, you've you've put on more than five pounds of muscle, and even and you've lost more than five pounds of fat. You've had a nice exchange of building more muscle and losing body fat. So don't worry about scale shit. Don't don't get caught up on that at all, especially when you're seeing progress like this. Awesome. That's that's exactly what I wanted to hear. That's that's beautiful. Yeah, because yeah. you got it, dude. Well, for me, I think based on my height, five eleven fact that I'm on TRT now, I'm eating lots of protein and, and with your help today, I'm going to get rid of this tennis elbow and get back into it full speed. I should be able to get to 185 pounds on this diet. Yeah, you're probably. Yeah, you're, 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 you're stay the course. Especially dude. if they double your TRT. Are you, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> you don't even need, that's what's awesome. You, that's a low, that's a very low dose of, of, of testosterone. So you're, that's phenomenal. That just, you're, just tell them what I say. What's yeah, the most I can legally take? Yeah, heavy handed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're good. What's you're the good. law say? I'll you're just good. take that mo that much. You're good. Are you following, are you, uh, are you following along on the YouTube channel, the docu-series that I'm doing right now? Uh, no, I'm going to check that out right now. Oh yeah. Go to mind pump TV. That one, not mind pump show. Go to mind pump TV. Adam wants to return the shirtless pick with his yeah. own. Yeah. Yeah. So, it. uh, you'll like it. I mean, uh, what I'm trying to do is similar to what the advice we're giving you right now is I'm, I'm not trying to change the weight on the scale too much, but I'm trying to change my body composition so you can watch that journey. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. cool. That's awesome. And so just stick at the 3000 calories and, yeah. and go to what yeah. weight before I cut. I mean, don't, again, don't worry about weight. Don't worry about go it. If you're of, getting stronger, you're, you're, you're doing good. You're, I mean, look at you're building muscle and you're leaning out. You don't really broke, need to change anything it. until you feel like you really need Here's to. Here's a big mistake people make. They're progressing and they're so excited about it that they want to find a way to hit a turbo button. Yeah. But no. the turbo button doesn't exist because you're already doing everything no, perfect. So everything's working. Yeah. 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 That's so cool to hear. Thanks, yeah. guys. I appreciate it. You got it, man. Right, man. Take it easy. In terms of cutting, just do it whenever you feel you you need to, but otherwise just stick out, use 3,000 of my maintenance and keep going. That's yeah. it. Yep. Yep. Awesome, guys. Thanks right, a brother. lot. You got it, brother. Yeah. Your weight hasn't even changed much except like eight pounds. Yeah. Your yeah. face looks different. I, so I looked at a picture or a video on Instagram and... Uh, like your face was way fatter before. It's, I mean, I'm not. I'm not trying to be funny. <laughs> it looks. Lean, I mean, you you've lost. I, I can't wait funny. to see what your measurements say. I know. I know. I can't wait to. I try, I try not to speculate too much because I don't want. Because you don't know what. The yeah, yeah. I don't want to set myself up for it to be all sad. But I mean, I I I know I've improved. How much based off these measurements? So that I mean, I I I'm taking pictures. I'm tracking. I mean, I posted my back last night. Did you see it? Yeah. No. Oh yeah. yeah, look at my back. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 it's so funny. He talked about this, and, he, and we see him. I literally just brought this point up that I like using my back as my gut, which is not normal. Most people are looking at their abs and uh -huh. their front. And like my back tells me so much. Why? Because of the side. The, the yeah, love handle so area? the last place to go body fat wise is the, the love handle uh -huh. area on me. And so, and because I have such a small waist to my, I, it, it's you can really see it. yeah, it's really pronounced. Like it's, it, and I get a good gauge on where I'm at or how, how I'm going there. Where sometimes I feel like the front can be deceiving for me. Yeah. I guess so. I don't know. It's like, but I just talked about this. I like Justin's back pictures. Yeah, you do. Hey, sorry to interrupt. It's October. Maps Muscle Mommy is fifty percent off, half off. If you're interested, click on the link below. All right, back to the show. Our next caller is Angie from Canada. Hi, Angie. Hello. Hey, how's it going, guys? Good. Good. How great. are you? I'm doing great. This is very exciting. <laughs> Thanks Super. for having me on your show. You yes. got it. How can we help you? Um. So today, I, well, not today, but the other day I wrote in to you guys and I had a question here regarding rest periods. Um, so most of the time I get to the gym over my lunch break, which is about an hour and it's about 10 minutes of driving and five minutes of changing. So I'm trying to pack in a workout. I tried to do uh, four, I guess it would be actually 16 sets of one muscle group in that 45-minute that time period that I have. And I just heard you guys talk a lot about rest periods being really important to strength training. So I'm just kind of looking to ask you guys a bit about that, what you think about, you know, I'm trying to get in one minute of rest between each of my sets. Is that enough? Let's first address the bodybuilding routine you're running. Yeah. Are you are you following a MAPS program? No. 
I'm not following a maps program. Yeah, okay, no. let's. That's our. So first. we're going to send you a maps we, program. We can hook you up with that. Yeah, and so that way we know you're following a good workout. And and then now now there, there's some context here that you didn't give us, but it's in our in your email. And the context is that you you have a limited time to complete your whole workout, and that's why you're doing the one minute rest. Because if you don't, then you run out of time. Is that correct? Uh, for the most part, and just like from my experience, I guess, with uh, training, I understood that that's a good rest time between sets. And maybe that's wrong. Maybe that's changed. Like there's, looking back 15 there's, years ago. So <laughs> there's nothing wrong with one minute rest yeah. period, but, but, but there's definite value in resting longer when it comes to strength, boosting your metabolism, shaping and sculpting your muscle, especially if you always have rested one minute. So if this is what you've always done, then switching to longer rest periods is going to make a big difference for you. Now, by the way, if you said that you always rested three minutes, I would say, hey, resting one minute might actually give you some benefit because it's new. Uh, it's a new novel stimulus. Mm -hmm. Now, what that would look like, okay, would be you would. You, there's two ways you could do this. You could either go to the gym, do same exercises, but rest three minutes. But now you're working out much longer. Or you could just do less sets and rest longer. I and mean, believe me, it makes a difference. I want her on MAPS 15. Based off of her time frame, what yeah. she's doing, uh, I think MAPS 15 with the rest periods that are three minutes between sets and really focusing on getting strong is going to radically change her gonna, It's going to blow your mind. Yeah, now yeah. the intention there, obviously, is we need to kind of squeeze out our, our effort a little bit more intentional-wise in terms of like if we're going to load our, load the weight, we're going to try to kind of increase that if, if at all possible. Uh, so the real focus is strength, but it's, you know, the rest is perfect, but let's, let's go ahead too and let's squeeze a little bit more of the intensity. So MAPS 15 is like a five to six day a week routine. So you'd be going to the gym and you'd work out and you would do the advanced version. So you'd be in there for about 25 minutes would be your workout. Um, and that, and that would be it. And, and it's literally, it's, it's two exercises each time, long rest period. What you would see is lots of strength gains and lots of shape uh, to your muscle based off of what you're currently doing. Can I ask like what I'm looking for in that rest period? Like sometimes I really try to focus on like my breathing, like yeah. slowing down mm. breath rate. That's what you so that do. I feel stronger. Yeah, you just chill. Yeah. I mean, yeah, people overthink rest period. Like it's <laughs> I literally chill. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. literally just sit there. I mean, well, I can tell you what we don't Calm do. Don't do jumping jacks. Don't move around like crazy yeah. trying to burn oh, calories. Don't, don't watch stress. Don't get on your cell on your phone and do stuff that's distracting and potentially negative. You just chill. Like, yeah, relax, relax, focus on your breathing, think about the set. Then you know how it felt. You where you want to feel it. Like, yeah. Um, I mean, three minutes goes by pretty fast, especially when you're lifting heavy. If you if we push the, that, that's going to be the key to this too, right? So, if you're giving yourself longer rest periods, you should feel yourself uh, stronger and uh, and more likely to be able to lift more weight. Challenge that. Yeah. I want you to push the weight. And there's going to be times where an exercise calls for ten reps. If I'm training you based off of your your history. I care more about adding more weight to the bar that I would say, okay, Angie, let's put 10 more pounds on it. And you yep. go, ah, Adam, I don't know if I can get 10. That's okay. If we stop at eight, I'm okay with that. I would rather you challenge yourself weight wise and not make it to the rep count that it says than for you to always choose a weight that you can easily do the, the 10 reps. That's going to be more important for where you're coming from and what's going to benefit you the most. That with three minute rest periods, MAPS 15 advanced version. And if you trust the process and believe in us, I promise you it'll radically change your physique. Okay. Yes. Three minute rest periods is yes. ideal. Okay? Yes. I do like to lift heavy, so I'm oh, not good. worried about that. Oh, you're going to love it then. <laughs> you're going to love it then. Yeah, you'll get stronger. You'll notice yeah. right away. And, and, awesome. Angie, the hardest part coming from your where you're coming from is going to be the psychological piece. It's going to feel way different to only do two to three exercises in a workout yeah. and to rest that long. You're going to get antsy about it. And there's going to be a part of you that's going to go like, this can't be working. This is not enough. I need more. And that's all bad thoughts, all wrong. Just trust, just trust. Uh, if you believe that we know what we're doing and we wouldn't send you down the wrong path, this is the answer. But the hardest part will be the psychological part of wanting to do more or wanting to keep it going faster. And it's you got to trust the process. There's definitely a reason why we want you doing it this way. And it's what's exciting is it's so different from how you've been training for so long. The body is going to change. It's going to change pretty quick off of this. So give it a couple of weeks and I promise you'll already see positive difference. Right on. Yeah. Okay. No, that's great. Um, I had a, just a second part of my question. I don't know if you wanted me to go yeah. forward with yeah. that. Yeah, so sure. That's all good. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so just sometimes like I never know if 
just tossing around and doing a set of bicep curls or, or a deadlift around the house, just like as I'm walking by the weights because I see them and I, I just like lifting weights. If that hurts me at all or if no. it really does nothing or I, what I does love it? That. That's positive. That's no, it's good. great. As long as, as long as the intensity is low. If you mm -hmm. go and like go after it all the time, not a good idea. Uh, yeah. But if you go and just kind of practice it and it's real kind of low intensity, it's wonderful. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's great. In fact, we call that Volume. a trigger session. Yeah. yeah. Uh, pardon? Sorry. We call that a trigger session. In fact, that's in one, one of our programs. Yeah. So it's, it, but it's got to be low intensity because yeah. you're just practicing the exercise. You're not out, you're not trying to go after it. The way we, with the way we structure that in our MAPS anabolic program is we encourage people to get like bands that attach. We have these bands that we sell that attach to like a door in your house and you just leave them hanging on the door. And when you walk by them, you go over there and you do, you know, 15 reps yep. of chest flies. And then the next time you walk by again, you do, you know, 15 reps of rows. You just did a little away. pump in the, in the arms, a little pump in the back of the chest. <laughs> That's incredible for you. What we wouldn't okay. want you to do is to do like a full on 20 minute hard workout right there with heavy weight and be sore and sweating. The idea is just to kind of send a signal to the muscles and yeah, frequently it's a great way that. to facilitate recovery. Yeah. It's, 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 awesome yeah. idea. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, that was my question. Uh, thanks, guys, for clearing yeah. that up a bit and, about rest. And Angie, I'd love to hear back from you in about 30 to 45 days because I think you're going to love what you see from this. Yeah, we're sending you that program uh, yep. over to you. Awesome. That is great. Thank you so much, guys. You right. got it. Have is she going to do it? I think so. You think so? I think she will. Okay, I hope so. I think yeah. she's going to do it, and then she might be like, uh... It's going to feel so... I mean, dude, you're talking about she's doing Listen, 16 she's... sets of a body part every workout with one minute. That's a... Like, that's a workout. Yeah, I know. I mean, she's... That's a different feel. Sweating, yeah. she's getting after it, and you're going to tell her, oh, now you're going to do... Uh, She'll get strong if she Seven doesn't. sets. So you're going to do less than half, and I want you to rest... I know. Twice, th twice as no, three Completely times as different long. Mindset. Yeah, it's going to be a here's boy. A little, it's going to rock her world. For people listening right now, here's a little industry secret among experienced personal trainers. Part of your job is entertaining your clients during rest periods because many times, yeah, they hate it. What am I doing? Can I do something else? Yes. So you got to be really good at having conversation, making the time pass. <laughs> And getting them to actually rest uh, yeah. because that's so important. So yeah. much. So she's also going to feel different from the workout. I mean, when you do sixteen sets of something, you're pumped like crazy and sweating. sweating. Like, different like, feel. It's going to feel so different. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope I hope she sticks with it because this is so different that her body will adapt and will change and will make a yep. big difference. Just, and we didn't even get into diet and all the other things that we know matter. Her programming is so off from what she probably should be doing that if she does this, she'll see a huge difference. Our next caller is Johan from Germany. What's up, Johan? What's happening, man? What's up, guys? How can How we help you? Good again? to see you again. Yes. Thanks so much for having me on once again. You look more jacked this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a good thing. Appreciate it. Yep. Maps 15 made the deal. Ah, uh, yeah, nice. We'll cut that for a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What, what do so you got? Can we help you right, got, I think I'm just going to read my. Yes, yes. Pardon? Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. That's easier. Okay. So, um, my dad recently got diagnosed with osteoarthritis, and it is mostly in his hips, but also in his shoulder joint, um, but both just on his right side for the moment. Um, he's already making changes to his diet and is now finally open to start strength training and getting into a gym, which I try to get him to start doing. In the past, but with our success. A little bit about him. He will be 74 years old soon. Has never really been into lifting weights, but has always been pretty active. So working the, uh, working around the house, walking the dog or riding his bike, playing table tennis, and now picking up golf earlier this year, as well as playing with the grandkids and being into track and field and swimming up to his 50s, roughly. But he hasn't done any structured sports for the past 10 to 15 years. He has had diagnosed Parkinson's disease for about 10 to 15 years now, for which he gets medication, but his decline has been pretty mild, thankfully, um, with the biggest obstacle being gross motor movement that makes it hard for him to walk sometimes or to keep balance. Currently, he is doing some bodyweight movements like Qigong, um, and some back exercise from the book on arthritis, as well as the golfing that I mentioned. I now would like to send them up to a local gym when I next visit them, uh, visit my parents in about two months, and then set them up with a proper training plan. 
My idea was to start with machines and then maybe sling trainer exercises. You have the possibility of sudden pain from the arthritis, which might cause trouble if he was doing free weights or unsupported exercises. Obviously, we would work on the whole body, but I would try to make the muscles around the hips the main focus and also the shoulders um, to help stabilize them. Um, does that seem like a reasonable approach or would you suggest something different? Also, which math program would you, would you recommend I get for him? I was thinking about suspension, but I don't know if that's suited for beginners, if that must, uh, might cause problems for him when the Parkinson's hits and he loses his balance. Hence my thought of starting with the machines. Or would you rather recommend MAP starter or MAPS resistance? Or maybe even maps bands, which you could do at home as well. Johan, also, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ne nearly finished. Um, do you have any suggestions for nutritional changes and supplements other than a mostly anti-inflammatory diet, sufficient protein, and anti-inflammatory supplements like curcumin, CBD oil, uh, and maybe things like glucosamine, MSM, and boswellia? Least I forget, I want to thank all four of you and the whole team behind the scenes everything that you do because you are not only making me a better coach for my health coaching clients um, but also a better person overall and I really want to give you massive respect for openly changing your minds on Dave Asprey that was huge awesome yeah no good um, I like I like suspension I also like symmetry is, is he going to be working with a, a trainer or will he be doing this on his own um, well that trainer is to a sense of that gym, but it's not like they're so. I mean, most of them aren't really certified and don't help much, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it, Starter is a good program for him. Now, the issue is I don't know how stable, how his stability is with Parkinson's because machines uh, can be good when you really start to lose stability uh, due to something like an, uh, you know, a, a chronic issue like that. But Starter would be the place that I would go um, because it's, it's a very, very good basic strength training program. It's not advanced in any way, shape, or form. It would be where I would start them at 74 with no strength training anyway. Um, machines, again, the, the value of machines is that if he loses stability, he's not going to drop a dumbbell uh, because he's, he's on a machine. I like your approach. Uh, it would be one or two days a week um, of strength training is what we're looking at. And then diet-wise, what you want are, are, is, is a diet that's going to improve or work on his gut health the most. There is, seems to be a connection with gut inflammation and Parkinson's uh, symptoms. Um, and one of the main symptoms of Parkinson's is the is our digestive issues anyway. So that's where I would look. And it probably would look like a, a, a gluten-free, dairy-free, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, low inflammatory, quote unquote, you know, type diet, high in low, fiber low fruits. Sugar. Yeah, vegetables, low sugar. <clears throat> Protein can be high, but I don't know what the contraindications are with Parkinson's medication. Like if he's on um, Levodopa, I, I don't know if if a high protein diet is an issue. That's something I would check with his uh, with his doctor. Um, but otherwise, it would be just avoiding any kind of foods that can cause any kind of digestive distress, which tend to be the processed foods, tend to be gluten, tend to be di you know dairy, and then you can go down the list: egg whites and nuts uh, and legumes. Um, so like paleo might be a good option because those foods in paleo or low fat fod FODMAP tend to be pretty well um, tolerated for most people. Supplement wise, omega-3, high EPA, omega-3 is going to be good. And then really you got to be careful with supplements when you're on uh, medication because some can actually cause problems. Uh, so I would be very careful with, with herbal supplements and I would present them to the doctor or go online and see if there's inter interactions with anything that he's, uh, that he's currently taking. I'm assuming he's on something that raises his dopamine. Uh, so I, I would look and make sure that there's nothing that's going to, but, uh, you know, high EPA fish oil is probably a good idea. I mean, the easy starting point is starter. It's the safest program to yeah. probably start anybody at. So that's kind of a no brainer, but if he can handle map suspension, I do like map suspension for yeah. him. I, I think, yeah, just I would probably avoid, you know, some of the core exercises where he puts his feet in the straps. Yeah, like yeah. that, that would probably, everything else is pretty much, uh, like he could, he could manage that well with, uh, intensity if he stays yeah. away from the anchor. Yeah. So 
That's, I mean, that's a and valid I, option. And I like the fact that it gives him just enough instability that he's going to tra train a lot of the stabilizer muscles so to help support. Uh, so I, I like suspension if you can modify it a little bit. And exactly that. I wouldn't be doing anything where he's he's putting his feet in the straps and getting creative. Well, that's the, that's the challenge. Is I don't know how far along. Because, like, you know, even a push-up in suspension, if he lacks... If he's got symptoms of Parkinson's that could right. be pronounced, that could be dangerous. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no. But a push, yeah. but you can also regress that. You can, go you can make it like you're pushing off a wall. That's why suspension yeah, is so you awesome. You might not be able to hold your legs straight. Up. I mean, it depends. Uh, I don't know depends, how far. Yeah. We don't know yeah. how far along this is. So seated True. exercises tend to be good. Uh, you know, again, this would be something I'll clear. And if he has access to a good trainer, that would be. There's nothing that we can do that would even Sounds come like close he to that. Though. Sounds like yeah. He because even starter, I would be a little the conscious ball. of the physio ball. That's right. Yeah, so you would look at a bench as an option. I instead. mean, he, he walks and stands okay, right? Or does he need uh, assistance for those? No, no, he walks and stands okay. He doesn't even have the tremors that are typical. It's just that sometimes when he's walking, he's like having these kind of stops where he, okay. where he kind of okay. loses momentum. Starter should be okay then. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, awesome. we'll send that to you. Oh, that's that's so kind of you. Thank you, so guys. Uh, thank you, thank you guys so much. Another place to look, and I'm not telling you to do this. I'm just saying research this. You probably already did. You seem like somebody that does research. Is I would look at the benefits of uh, certain uh, bacteria strains on Parkinson's. Mm. I believe Lactobacillus and Bifido have, seem to have benefit for Parkinson's, and that's just off the top of my head. I'm not quite sure. So a good probiotic may be beneficial to him, but I, I would look that up first. Yeah, that's a good point. I didn't take that first, but I, I looked into creatine, which might help. Um, and then obviously fish oil that you mentioned. That was, yeah, that's something I forgot men to mention earlier. Good. Excellent. Um, Johan, are you in our well, private forum? No, I'm not. I'm going to have Doug give you free access to our private forum too. I, I'd love to hear. How, oh, man, you're awesome. I, I, I'd love to hear how your dad's doing after, you know, you get started. But that way, you know, one of the things that we're all challenged with right now is like we can't see him move. And so right. I think we're all kind of like, oh, here's the safe route. Speculating, yeah. But there's a chance that we would want to progress him because if he can, we, we want to challenge him a little yeah. bit. Uh, so just stay in touch with us in there. Let us know. How he's doing? How's Map Starter? Is it easy for him? Is it very challenging? How's he do with the stability ball stuff? Like, let us know uh, some feedback uh, as you go through this journey, and then uh, the boys and I can probably help you troubleshoot along the way. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, I'm definitely gonna do that. So, awesome. gonna spend some more time with them around Christmas time, so that I can actually go to the gym with him, and then help him yeah, with the workouts and everything. For you, man. Yeah, that'd be great. great. Yeah. That'd be great. great. Awesome. Guys, you are wonderful. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. you dude. Dude. Take it easy. Bye. That's a tough one. I, I had yeah. one client with Parkinson's. Yeah, I did too. Yeah. And um, you know what you're looking, what you're trying to do there, just for trainers listening, is you're trying to offset the degenerative aspects mm -hmm. of it with strength gains. Yeah. And sometimes all you can do is slow down the the uh you know the de decline mm -hmm. but strength gains will always help they always contribute and it's just it's, a, it's you're right adam like yeah. it's it could, there's such a wide like range yeah. of what this can do you yeah. know where you're at that you know it's like you don't want to overwhelm them but you also want to stim stimulate and challenge them yes. just appropriate sitting on a physio yeah. ball could be dangerous for some people right. with parkinson's right. right and for others it would be perfect so yeah. all right i know you like that episode if you did check this one out 30 percent body fat for men this is way too high this is actually a bit high for women as well so in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from 30 to 10. What is 10% body fat? This is when you have a visible six pack. Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible, but not if you guess along the way. So we're going to talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now there's a huge range, right? Of like body types. Yes. Some people can run uh, a little bit heavier uh, and, or a little bit higher. Body